Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show live entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series. How's everybody doing today? It's so good to see your smiley faces. If your face isn't really smiling right now, and I'm just saying smiley faces, we're going to make you smile because we've got an amazing guest joining us here. And she's amazing. And we're so excited. And uh, she's an incredible vocalist. Yes, gold record selling chart topping R&B vocalist from the 90s, yes. And you may say, well, whatever happened to Tara Kemp? It was actually a, like a mini documentary answering that question. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna catch up with her. Uh, again, she's been doing this for a long time and she's got an extraordinary background. You may remember some of the music over the years. There's so much more. I mean, she's a prolific artist and, uh, Look at all the great music. We're going to talk about all these great photos that we have. There's some really amazing stories uh, tied to all of these great photos, these really special photos in her life, her musical career, her family life, and so much more. But uh, again, going back to the 90s, she is uh, she's a star and always has been. And I want to tell you a little bit about her here on the show because, again, it's really exciting to have her here. She, of course, is an American singer who was signed to the Giant Records Warner Brothers music label, best known for her two Billboard Hot 100 Top 10 singles in the 90s, Hold You Tight and Peace of My Heart. Matter of fact, there's a new version that is out, uh, coming out as well, Peace of My Heart, which is really exciting. Hold You Tight achieved RIAA gold status and reached number three on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. And it ranked number 25 for the year on the Billboard year end Hot 100 singles of 1991. It peaked at uh, number 69 in the UK singles chart as well. It was followed by another top 10 single, Peace of My Heart, which reached number seven in July 1991, came in at number 84 for the year. Tara's quick success moved on quickly. But her third single, Too Much, came in at 95. She was also she also recorded a song titled, um, this was really cool, Action Speak Louder Than Words, which was featured on the soundtrack of the Fox television series, Beverly Hills 90210. Come Correct was released in 1994 in Giant Records. Then they sort of wrapped up from there. In 2013, she even created um, a whole channel celebrating career vintage material teasers of the track called water and she revealed uh, that uh, she was working on new material as well she released in 2016 paris and spring her first single in 22 years as a charity single to benefit victims of the paris attacks and in 2021 she revealed plans to independently release her shelved sophomore album and remastered versions of her 91 singles and um it's really, really incredible. That's just the short list, gang. That is always just the short list. There's always so much more to the story. And we're going to find out. If you ever wondered what happened to Tara Kemp, she's been very active, but she's back in it full now. You know, she has family and a child and uh, she's got a lot of things that she's been doing. But again, if you go back to the days where she was uh, charting, uh, it's really incredible. And I'm sure you remember some of the fantastic music. What's really cool is when an artist does what she's doing, she's taking those original songs and she is uh, bringing new life to them. She told me moments ago that she's a big fan of Melissa Manchester. And that's really, really exciting because she watched the entire episode. Now I say it's a conversation. We don't call these interviews. I say it's a conversation because the the conversation that uh, Melissa and I had was extraordinary. It wasn't just a 20 minute chat about, Hey, tell us about the new music or what have you. It was really a heart to heart, deep conversation about her life or about her passions, about her uh, musical background, but also the things that she uh, believes in. And it was really fantastic. If you didn't see that episode, check it out. It's been, you can binge watch all the episodes over 700 on our YouTube channel. I want to let you know as well, Melissa Manchester will be returning to the Gym Masters show live this Sunday, 
That's right. This Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll, we'll tell you, we'll announce some of the guests that are coming up. Tony Orlando, John Davidson, amazing people coming up over the next couple of days. But she's a fan of uh, Melissa's work. And we were just talking about that. And I think that's uh, uh, extraordinary. And Melissa is doing something similar where she has that new Live 77 unreleased album that's out now and has been doing updated versions of don't cry out loud and other epic songs. And it's great that Tara is doing that as well. She's extraordinary. Now we want to quickly say, we always acknowledge our viewers. We have lots of great viewers that watch all the time. They are called the gym master show or JMS lovety squad. We love that. And some new faces coming in here as well. Poetic Justice, Jeff Bailey. Welcome to the show. Now, gang, if you would like to comment live during the show while the show is live, we will be archiving this episode so you can see it again, you know, in the archives on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. But if you would like to uh, comment in our JMS chat room, that's the chat room and comments that's open and available right now. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that's a gift for our subscribers. Folks who subscribe to the YouTube channel have the opportunity to comment, chat amongst uh, themselves. And also we can see some of your comments as well. And sometimes we even throw a couple on the screen. And if you definitely want to have it on the screen, do a super chat, super emoji, super stickers, bold color. We'll personally thank you. And that helps support the show as well. But uh, we would love it if you do subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps us big time blast out all these episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle of Variety Talk Show Series. Again, we've been doing it now for two years and some 700 episodes, which is extraordinary. Don't forget to give it a like, too. Uh, when you do subscribe, there's no cost for subscribing. You just hit that red button. Um, make sure you click the notification bell and give us a like. Click the thumbs up icon, you see, and give us a like on this episode and all the ones that you enjoy here on the Gym Master Show Live series. So busy day for me, a lot of radio, a lot of television, all of the stuff. I work in TV and radio uh, professionally here on the East Coast. We're in the New York area here uh, between New York and Boston and the Southern New England coast. That's where this show comes from. It's a beautiful, stunning day. It's 77 degrees, it's sunny, and there's no humidity. Um, we're sending blessings to everybody else in the Western part of the country where it's like 114 degrees. Uh, on the West Coast and in the South, there's some storms going through. So we send you lots of our JMS uh, lovity as well. We hope everybody's doing well. Subscribe to the channel, all the rest. We would really love that. That helps us big time. And also one other thing, make sure you leave a comment on the YouTube channel. You know what happens when you do that? We see it and we love it and we respond and we engage, but YouTube sees it. They take the episode and they blast it out even further to more people when you give us a thumbs up. It's called engagement. Um, and uh, also when you leave a comment. So cool stuff. My excitement is to welcome Tara to our show. There she is. And it's really awesome to have her here. Tara, welcome to the program, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Jim. So how, you're, <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. I know we've been excited about this and talking about this and uh, really awesome to have you here. And our friend, of course, Joe Fanfara, brilliant actor, sort of connected us, put us together, which is fantastic. And uh, we thank him and he's probably tuning in now or catching the archives. Good to see you. Joe and his, his brother, uh, Jimmy, is coming on. He's in the paranormal world. So it's like a, a, a sort of family-ish reunion oh, family. going <laughs> A lot of history here on the Gym Master the father Show. father of my son. That's right. The father of your son is Joe. Exactly, exactly. Um, how are you and, and how is how are the temperatures? How's the weather where you are? You're in the oh, LA so area? I'm in, I'm in Northern California in the Bay Area. Oh, the Bay Area, yes. So you're towards San so Francisco? Hot. 90 degrees today. 90 degrees. What? Are you in San Francisco proper? No, I'm, in, I'm in Berkeley. Oh, in Berkeley, yes. And what's the temperature there? I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it. What? Uh, <laughs> what is Ninety the degrees. <laughs> and humid? No, just just hot. We're very hot. And you know, we're not used to heat up here, so we. It's not like we have air conditioning. No. In the Bay Area, so. Yes. So now tell us 
early on for you, what were the inspirations to go into music, even in the beginning? Were there those in the family who were in the musical world? Tell us about, you know, where you grow up and some of those early influences for you, Tara. Oh, okay. So, um, well, yes, I come from a musical family. Um, I grew up in Livermore. And um, my grandmother on my dad's side had a degree in music and played the organ at church. Um, her husband, my, my dad's father, wrote music and had that published. Um, my dad had a beautiful tenor voice. My mom sang in a band when she was younger. Um, but I'm the first, myself and my brother are the first to, to really write a lot of music. You know, both of us are right right music. So, so so what was happening for you early on? I mean, were you in school plays? Were you getting involved in bands? What was happening early on that sort of really started to get this career going? Because as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, as the 90s were going along, you were absolutely on fire. I mean, you were scoring here and there, the billboard charts and gold and, and really incredible things were happening, right? Yeah. I think, you know, it, hearkening back to the interview you did with Melissa, one of the things that struck me in that conversation was thank you for that. How long it. it took for her to get signed. Yes. But I think one of the extraordinary things about my experience was that I never shopped for a deal. Um, I basically was this, this song was discovered by KML radio here in San Francisco. And um, they, called labels that's how i ended up getting signed to big beat records first um from craig kalman who's now the ceo of atlantic records and um and then irving wanted the record to set up giant records and so he bought it from or made it. hi that was jeff bailey <laughs> you saw him right <laughs> yes hi jeff Tell, tell the audience who he is for the so folks Jeff that are. Jeff is uh, one of my oldest, dearest fans. He has just been such a great friend to me over the years. And one of the people that really made me feel, uh, you know, not afraid of like reaching out and talking to fans, you know, because my era, we didn't, we didn't do that kind of stuff. We didn't have that access because we didn't have the internet. Right. You know, you, you get fan letters and stuff, but there's not... There wasn't this kind of intimacy, direct connection, direct communication happening. So um, that's one of the things I've really been enjoying about this time is getting to know some of my fans and having friendships with them. You know, Steve it's Bird says, I think Jim landed a big one tonight with Tara. <laughs> and I can't wait for even bigger ones in the days to come. Melissa Manchester, John Davidson. Thank you, Steve, for watching. It's nice to have you here. And hey, um, love it, Love the Levity Squad. That's right. That's right. The Levity Squad. Lee Lee, I spent many years wondering about this woman. So happy to see this. See, okay. they've been thinking about you, Tara. Yeah. Um, I guess that would be the question. And, and there was like a documentary type thing done on this or something. <laughs> what happened? Whatever happened to Tara Kemp? So, so tell us. I mean, obviously, you have a child. You got married. You know, your uh, domestic life, family. Um, tell us about, you know, and um, the music industry is crazy, you know, record labels fold, things change, uh, tastes mm -hmm. change for you. Uh, whatever happened to Tara Kemp, <laughs> I guess well, inquiring <laughs> minds on the gym master okay. show want to know. <laughs> well, what happened to me is I think the, the part of my experience that's not very unusual uh, for an artist. And that is that, um, I got kind of run over by the business, you know, and by the label, the way that the, the music business is set up is it's really set up. So artists don't make money, right. It's set up for you to stay, um, owing the label money, right. It's kind of like a loan sharking business. And then, um, kind of like a credit card company, <laughs> like a loan sharking. It's, it's not good. Right. So you have to pay for like, there's recoupables. You have to pay for like half the budget of the, of the video. Right. Um, 
all the promotional tours, all that kind of stuff, your transportation, all that stuff comes out of your little your. Tiny percentage of what you get. So basically I wasn't making any money and then they wanted to control what I was going to do creatively. And that was just not that, you know, nobody's who's signing up for that. I mean, some people, some people will because some people want fame so much that they don't, they will do that. For me, I want the whole reason for being an artist was to express myself um, authentically. Um, it wasn't an act. It wasn't a, um, I just want to be famous situation. You know, music and creativity are such a part of who I am. And it's, um, it, that. I just wanted to make music. I just wanted mm -hmm. to be creative. Um, and I didn't want to be told what I could and couldn't do. Right. So I left. And I thought I would be able to find a deal elsewhere, but I couldn't. And then we put out Come Correct independently. And and um, I, um, I'm waving. <laughs> he's a fabulous author of many many books he was a guest on our show and he says i love tara's music oh, hold you tight is from the soundtrack of my life our friend david matthew barnes a brilliant author uh really he's cool. loving your stuff too tara for years that's, i think that's one of the coolest things about my experience is is having that great opportunity to be part of people's soundtrack of their life you know yes at that time that is, um, I think that's one of the things that I'm most proud of, you know, with yeah. the, whole, the whole thing experience. So in the beginning, so, so there's your answer folks, as far as what had happened. And then you, did you decide to just pack up the bags and pause it all and, and just focus on family and other things in your life and then come back to it because the the interests and the fanfare and the fans and the they want to hear from you they want more from tara how did that all happen um i didn't stop music i just stopped recording music and putting it out so i i continued to perform i um toured asia um i lived on guam for a while which was really fun um and um then my um my dad passed away in 1996 um he became he had become ill right before i left on the club mtv tour in 1991 um with lymphoma so in 1996 he passed away um i think in 2000 i ended up moving back to la and in 2001 i had my son Josh, mm -hmm. and um you know which was also a dream you know it's hard to walk away from a dream i'd say about yes the especially something you study your whole life and dream your whole life to be able to do um and work towards that so that kind of having to walk away from my dream of doing that on that level um was difficult but yeah. it also gave me the opportunity to pursue other dreams that I had. And raising my kid was one of those. And being able to raise him not in the public eye, which was great. And there's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love how our voices change when we're around yeah. kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that He's all baby. grown up now. He's 20. But, Is he uh, really? Yeah, he's 20 years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, is he in music too or totally different? He is, uh, okay, so my son is also super creative and yeah. he does write music. He's been writing music since he was four. And, um, but he's really into- Good looking um, kid too. Wow. Thank you. Mm. He's really into video game design. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, computer science and- Oh, yes. Creating the stories, really into creating the stories. Um, but he also writes music, so he's writing music for for his games right now, which is pretty cool. So he's writing the music for video games. Wow, mm -hmm. that's really cool. My nephew was in that world as well, and now he's he's moved into artificial intelligence, oh, wow. uh, yeah. which is a whole other. Yeah, he created. He actually built a complete brand new 
AI platform. I mean, it's like a, a like a new Microsoft, a new. He just came back from Cannes. All this AI stuff. France. Told me something. Show me something. It's There's unreal. Something. There's a a new app. This is not okay. So anybody who's interested in in music and isn't like a musician, okay, you don't play an instrument. But you want to like make music at home? There's this new app, and I don't even know what the name of it is. But you can sing into it, and it's like a MIDI. But you, yes, your voice, right? So you can sing and and pick any instrument to play, mm -hmm. and then you can create a whole track with your voice, right in your bedroom. <laughs> it's <laughs> like I mean, AI. now that it's it's AI, that's that is the convenience AI. of AI. Hopefully, of the way it is. <laughs> but, but, but back when you were starting it, you had to be out there doing your thing, right? I mean, you had to be making things happen in the studio and stage and appearances and all the different things, right? Yeah. 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 And, um, and right, you know, hold you tight. I did not write hold you tight. Yeah. So the way that whole situation went down is um, I was already working on my own stuff. Yeah. And um, Tuheen and Jake, who were the producers on that, um, they wanted me to sing this. They, they wanted to do this 12 inch and uh, this kind of freestyle record called 4 2. And it was just a terrible song. And, um, yeah. and I didn't really want to. Uh, I was I was dating Tuheen and I didn't want to we, I didn't really want us to work together. I didn't think it was a good idea. Um, and they begged and pleaded. And so I was like, OK, if um, if you sorry, my phone turned that off. Uh, if you let me sing this other song that you have, Hold You Tight on the B side, I will do it for you. Mm. That was our negotiation. So um, that's how Hold You Tight came to be recorded. And that was the one that got attention. And the one that got signed. And no one ever heard of the other song again. Because <laughs> they didn't make it on the album. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that works? Yeah. But that song really took off, didn't it? Did Were you surprised by the response I from mean, the public? Well, yeah. They it, really... It was, a very, it was very much like a kind of an overnight success situation. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, it happened very, very fast. Once it got played on the radio, there it was like within months I had a major label deal, and I didn't do anything to get it. But then, then again, now, do you believe in um, the power of positive thinking? Absolutely, <laughs> and emotional intelligence, and all of that. Yes, okay. you've come so, to the right uh, show for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big believer in that, and um, so if, if you're into manifesting and stuff like that, and you're, or you're thinking about it, um, it definitely works because I was at a point, I always knew that this was what I wanted to do. And I got into a point in my life where I was really happy. I was in a great relationship. I was very happy and satisfied in, and I felt like, you know, I'd done all my work, you know, all my woodshedding. I felt like confident in my abilities as a singer, as a songwriter, um, as a performer. And so I just said out loud, like, okay, to the universe, right? Okay, I'm ready for it to happen now. Yes. In three months, I had a, a major label deal. And I didn't do anything to get that. Except just be open to opportunities when they presented themselves. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's really, you know, during those years, the real height for you, um, Tell us about what that was like. I mean, that really had to be extraordinary because, like you said, you didn't necessarily set out for this rocket ship to happen. You were doing it because you love music, you love performing, you love the arts, you love creating, connecting, or relating with people. And then, boom, all of this starts to happen and relatively fast. For you, how did you handle it? You know, sometimes when that stuff happens some people it gets to be overwhelming and they can't handle it and they go into a different direction some people grab the bull by the horn and they go with it for you when things were really taking off and people were noticing how 
talented you were and are, what was that like for you? It was exciting. I, I felt like, um, you know, it really was a whirlwind. Everything happened very, very quickly. Um, and so it was very exciting. It was really exciting to get to meet other artists and perform with them, touring. Um, live performance was just, I think that was just the best thing. And I remember doing like the very first, I think the very first television thing I did was I hosted, um, it was on uh, VH1, Is that was that the name of that music station back in the day? There was uh, VH1 and VH1. there was MTV. So TRL was the one with Carson Daly right, on right. Uh, MTV. So, and then there was VH1 behind the music right. and all the- so VH1 was, that was the first like TV thing I did. And they had the, you know, the words on the screen um, to read. And so I was hosting the top 21 countdown. And, um, you know, I felt very, you know, even though I'd studied acting and all that kind of stuff, I'd never done anything like on TV or film or anything like that, or read a prompter or any of that stuff. So I felt really like unprepared. Hi, I'm Tara Kemp. Today's Hi, countdown of the top 10 songs on the radio. <laughs> and it's all stuff they've written for you. So it's like, probably not the way I'd normally speak, but, um, but it was really fun. I mean, everything was really exciting. And fun. yes, because it was all new. Yes, All of it was new. Phenomenal adventure. I mean, who gets to do what I got to do? It was right. just incredible ad adventure. Yeah. So going on radio. Radio was a big highlight, I think, also because radio is what really broke me and discovered me. So I had a very special bond with the radio people. Yes. Appreciative of them and their support, you know. Yeah. So I always enjoyed going. And, and I don't think I've done a live interview jim since back in those days when i used to do radio until now until now that's fantastic we have the right <laughs> we, have the, we have the appropriate graphic jms exclusive that's perfect <laughs> <laughs> now do, were there opportunities as well i'm sure you got calls from people that are like hey join our group join our band let's form a band let's collaborate i, I would imagine you would think seeing how the public uh and the peers were responding to these songs to this music to your voice to your talent that your phone would ring and say okay come with us or we want to do some things with you here did any of that happen mm -mm. no no one asked me to join their band. <laughs> um, or or even like, you know, back in those days, it, even like there wasn't a lot of people even doing collaborations then, musically, you know. Um, but That's the, true. Yeah. Prince was Prince. Michael Jackson was Michael Jackson. Yeah, Madonna was Madonna. Collaboration going Celine on. Celine Dion was Celine Dion. Right. Exactly. But, you know, I'm very good friends with um, the guys from Tony, Tony, Tony. I'm, we all met before either of us had hit records out back when I was singing with Rosie Gaines. And yeah. um, so we're we're all buds and I'm really close with uh, Dwayne because he, he's the one that actually lives here. <laughs> Raphael's in L.A. and so is Tim. But um, Dwayne is in Oakland. So he's close by. Um, but I go and do shows with them occasionally, um, which is fun. You know, he lets me sit in and play bongo, congos and sing oh, back. That's cool. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. You know, it's a great live band. And I, you know, that's where I, I come from live music. And so that's yes. what I really love is, is there's nothing like being with a live band. Track shows are fun. Yeah it's fine for what it is you know it, it's definitely for a, for an entertainer it's a lot less expensive to go out with track obviously than with live musicians yeah and dance music it's really common um but for me there's just nothing like being with live musicians on a stage the whole energy is different so that when i did the club mtv tour that was one of the things that was really important to me is to bring a live band Yes. 
I ended up losing money on that tour because I brought a band, but it was totally and worth it. Did you, were you funding it yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? See, a lot of people I don't know these support. things. I couldn't get tour support from the label. Um, you know, I hear that a lot. I, we had a couple of guests on recently, major people too, who have said the same thing. Uh, that it's the business, you know. You have to do a lot of the stuff yourself, you know. It's uh, and I don't think people really realize that they think, you know, you're catered to and you're going from limo to limo. And I mean, it might be a few that that's the situation, but for the majority, you're you're out there grinding, pounding the pavement, promoting, doing, creating, writing, performing, and, and hoping that you throw it up in the air and people like it and grab onto it. Um, and they think that, you know, you become a multimillionaire overnight and there's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes. And there's not really that much money to be made in the music business. If you're, if you're on a major label, there's just, you know, I, I do have two gold records, but I made, I did not make really any significant money from, from my time in in the record business. And a lot of people always say, oh, don't ever talk about that. Like every, you should tell people you're rich and you made lots of money. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, that's not true. You know, and people should know that, you know, some of their favorite artists are being ripped off by the labels. Um, Is that you know, why I mean, so many of them are becoming independent? I think it's such a great example. When you see somebody like her, who's so successful, and, um, you know, can't get the rights to her music back. Had to go re-record her stuff so that she can make money. When you see some someone like Rihanna, this is like not even putting music out anymore because you can't make mu money. So she's right. doing her Fenty brand. She's doing her perfume stuff, you know. Um, and there's a lot of money to be made doing that. Just making music and selling music, there's not a ton of money to be made. Not if you're on a label, not if, unless you're independent and you're doing it yourself. That's why Spotify, even, well, even what do you think about like Spotify and all that? Is that, that's, is that pennies? I mean, pennies uh, on the dollar, unless you're Joe Rogan, <laughs> you're, making, you're making less than, right. You're making less than uh, 50 cents per stream. So you're gonna really. Platforms. So that's why you so see a lot of people. Lot of money. Yeah, there's there's not a lot the of money that the, the artist actually that comes to the artist, right? Yeah. And then there's everybody in the artist pie as well, right? Because you got a manager, you got a booking agent, you got you know a business manager. Like every, everybody's taking percentages. You got all these percentages, yes. Right. Yeah. So, so for for instance, and I'm. That year, 1991, I had made the most money I'd ever made. I, before that, I was working in cosmetics at Estee Lauder, Macy's Union Square in San Francisco. <laughs> That's and, interesting. Yeah. My so that mother worked. My mother worked for 33 years for Estee Lauder. Oh my God! In, wow. in management uh, in New York. So Great. we always yeah. knew uh, my sister as well. All the new things that were coming out because they also did a lot of the. They did Tommy Hilfiger, Bobby Brown, a lot of uh, male oh, lines too. Yeah, they have a lot of companies. So for my mother's birthday, she would get some, some like a $500 gift certificate or something to go to their in, employee warehouse, in-house boutique, and everything was 40 to 50% off. And then she had the $500 birthday gift certificate. So she would call all us and we would go there with her just oh you can pick that and i picked up i got a lot of really cool tommy hilfiger like duffel bags and like all kinds of stuff that sd lauder was involved in um mm -hmm. you know uh, bottling or shipping or packing or whatever um so i see lauder yeah huh? yeah i see lauder that was a good job i did not quit my job when i got signed either you I stayed know, with I kept the leave. <laughs> if people went into that uh, macy's store, department store you know, they would see you there right it was a union store and uh, it was a really good job and I hadn't gotten paid anything yet. So I didn't, I didn't quit my job <laughs> until I actually saw money, you know, when I got my advance, which wasn't much. 
Yeah. I think, you know, but that yeah. year, just to, to, to show you the, the amount that comes out of what the artist is getting paid. So that year I grossed $400,000. I netted $40,000. And um, so I only made 10% of what I brought in that. Grossed 400,000, netted 40, folks. Did you get that? 40,000. So I made 10%. And all the rest goes the to? My manager made. I made the same amount as my manager made, even though I was the one busting my butt doing the work. And the record company? The record company, that's not in, that's not including the, so the, the record company, you know, they take, I, that, I didn't make any money from the record label. I never made it. I, I got $15,000 advance from the label. That's yeah. the only money I ever saw from Giant Records. I never saw another penny from them ever again. And that's why, uh, you know, now everybody's talking about the streaming and the online, but also people were always saying, you got to be on tour. You got to sell tickets, tickets, tickets. You got to have concerts. You got to have performances. So you've always seen that's where you make that's so where the much of the pushing of the concert world. Um, how about you with any of that area? Yeah, that, and that's where I made all my money. Was the concerts and yeah, touring, touring, touring. Yeah. and had great, um, I was with famous artists agency. They're still around. They're not owned by, um, John and Jerry aid anymore, but they're still around. And, um, they were fantastic. They kept me working and they were really, you know, they knew I was green. I didn't know anything. And they really helped give me a lot of information and told me like, stop doing these free promotional things through the label. You're paying for this. Not only are you not getting paid, you're the one paying to go do these shows. Right. What this, what you don't know and what you don't understand is that. So I think a lot of people get all starry eyed about the business and, um, and don't know. I, People are starting to know more now. There's a lot more info. Oh, my dog needs that to get out. <laughs> There's somebody here. Um, oh, yeah. that's cool. If the, was he it a? He needs to go out. Um, is, it, is it a? Is it a dog or a cat? It's a dog. Because they love to see that on camera. Yes, absolutely. Ah, look at that gang! You got your wish. You were hoping that she had a friend. Who's that? <laughs> that's Ace, my puppy. <laughs> He wants to go outside. What kind of play. dog? He's a peekapoo. Pekingese and poodle. Yeah. And how old? He's nine. Wow. You know nine what happens? It happens on every show. Whenever, you know, a dog, a cat, a child, or a bird or something comes in, you become secondary to. Do you mind pet. if I look out real quick? <laughs> no, go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Hang on. See, I'll they get. Right yeah. <laughs> They're excited because they get to see the guest's chair. Uh, we have so many episodes where we've seen the chair that the guest sits in because they have to get up to recharge their battery, recharge their phone, recharge their laptop, let the dog out, let the kid in, have the bird fly out or get a drink. So, so that's probably the 9,000th chair that we've seen of the guest. And that's okay. a nice chair. That's a fancy chair. You're sitting in there. Nice <laughs> dark wood and <laughs> that's, that's it, huh? Is it warm in the house? Is it warm there? So hot, yeah. It's yeah, so it's it, it, because it's yeah, it's hot and yeah. humid there. It's <laughs> really hot. That's it. Tara it's Kent hot. is so hot. hot. She was so hot, hot in the nineties. Yeah, you're hot, man. You're hot. She was hot on the charts in the nineties, and she's hot still, hot still in twenty twenty two. But in this case, it's literally <laughs> literally hot. Yeah. So, with the idea of coming to re-record re-release, update, freshen, reconnect with the fans. Cause it's obvious, you know, we're talking 2022 and you've been, you know, you've been doing your thing throughout, but that nineties time period, which is so pivotal, we have people here that are still with it. It's as if you didn't go away. Your Crazy. terror has always been there, which is really a beautiful thing. I mean, what's that like for you? How does that make you feel when people start um, resurfacing or saying, I never went away. I've always loved your music. I've always loved what you do and how you do it. Um, 
that must make you feel like, gee, this is awesome. I, it gives you the uh, gumption to want to do more, right? It does. It does. And, it, you know, I got to say, it always surprises me when people remember me because I feel like, you know, even for me, that was lifetimes ago, you know, <laughs> that that went down. But it's exciting and it's fun. And I love that there's this whole resurgence of 90s music right now. Um, so I'm really excited about that and um, excited about putting out this lost album, you know, of 90s music that nobody's ever heard. Tell us about <laughs> that. Yeah, that's very, very exciting. Tell us about what you're working on and what people can expect and, and what that process is like, sort of revisiting the lost music and bringing it out and, and updating it probably maybe modern, modernizing it a little bit, but not taking away the, the real authentic essence of the original too. That's a whole uh, art form unto itself, isn't it? To master that. Yes. It's really been an interesting process. Um, so re-recording Hold You Tight and Peace of My Heart, you know, that part was really trying to keep it as authentic as possible. Um, this version of Peace of My Heart that I'm doing is the, the single version, the, yeah. uh, the version that was on the video. That is one of my motivations for doing this is that that version is not available on any streaming platforms. Only the album version of Peace of My Heart is available. So um, so it's exciting to be putting this out because this is the version that people actually know and remember. This is the one that they, yeah. Yeah, but, wow. um, but it's, you know, I produced it myself with the help of my engineer, uh, Dave Banta, who's phenomenal um, and has like all the old equipment. You know, we used to, everything was analog. Yeah. Then. Okay. Yeah, we, absolutely analog, we right? Thing like Neve, we had a Neve console. We had, um, you know, tube mics. Everything was tubes. And um, there's did you a prefer very, that? Did you like that world? Oh yeah, yeah. I really like it because it's very really warms the voice. It is. I thought sometimes like my my voice needed that. Like it could sound a little um, high, you know, or. Yeah or yes. piercing a little piercing right so, th so it that, can sort of surround it can round out the edges feel, yeah yeah it, it's really it has it's a very warm sound so it was great to go record there because i got mm. to use the old kind of mics and he's got all the the need compressors and and so we were able to get the sound pretty authentic um i have um this young artist, Mahari, doing the rap on it for me um, that I've been mentoring. He's a phenomenal young artist that you'll be seeing more of. Um, so How did you guys connect? How did that happen? Um, I, how did I actually met him through my connection with Dwayne. Um, he had some, Dwayne does this thing called Small Stages. It's a local mm -hmm. In Oakland and um, where young artists can come and perform almost any, if you if you sign up and you talk to them almost anybody can come and perform and um, so Mahari had done that and a friend of mine showed me the video actually you no know, his mom showed me the video that I met also through Dwayne and people around Dwayne um, and um, He's just, he can sing, he write, he plays guitar, he, he writes, he, his raps are fantastic. He's, um, he's really good. So it's exciting. So I'm, I've been mentoring him and there's another young artist to check her out. Um, Mavica, mm. Mavica music on, um, YouTube and, um, or on Instagram. And I don't think I don't know if she's much on Facebook, but I know she's on Instagram. Tell them about tell them about the show. Maybe they pop on as guests. It'd be cool to oh, sort yeah. of spotlight, yeah. uh, throw shed some light on what they're doing, huh? Mm -hmm. And and doing with you. That's fantastic. So she's a phenomenal uh, young artist, singer songwriter, a, amazing voice. Like you, y'all are not going to believe her. Seriously, 
Like yeah. we haven't heard this kind of voice since Whitney Houston. Really? Seriously. So this this is something really She's exciting. Been- major so um keep an eye out for her too and that's really fun um encouraging young artists you know yes what was it like going back into the studio oh really fun i like to be i love being in the studio the studio is like it's so much fun it was really fun with so um we started out with hold you tight at um, Willie's studio. So Will Hammond wrote Hold You Tight. He's the primary writer on that song. Right. And so he produced the tracks. And then I took the tracks down to LA to Dave's studio and we did the vocals there. And then I produced Peace of My Heart down there with him. And um, oh my God, it was so much fun. It was so much fun finding all the different tones you know, the different sounds and did it all come right back to you too. Was it, did it feel like you were home again? You know what? It thought it was even better. Mm. It was even better because I was in the driver's seat this time. I'm, I was the one one producing. I'm the one calling the shots. I'm, I'm the one, you know, making it sound the way I want it to sound. What sounds good to me. So that was, it was, it's fun. It's like a new, you know, Paris and spring was, that was the first, song that I produced and released um, that I did with Dwayne, which, and that song is on the new album, but not that version. That song was written for the new album and the original version will be on the album coming out. Um, But Paris and Spring with, as a duet with Dwayne Wiggins is available and you guys can get that anywhere on any streaming platform. Um, iTunes, Spotify, all the, the and there's a video on YouTube, but we're not, it's not a performance video. It's just honoring the, the lives lost uh, that day. Do you see more of this happening for you now that you were back in the studio and you're bringing this music back with the more updated, modernized tweaking? Has the bug bit you? Do you want to get back in and start recording more and doing it on your terms and the voice and the message that you have? Your message now, because we're all a little bit, you know, older and wiser. um, So your perspective on life and your vision and thoughts might be uh, same but enhanced or different. So you want to reflect some of that maybe in the music as well. Do you see that happening for you? Oh yeah. I mean, I've been writing all this time. So I have quite a catalog of music that I, that I've been writing and that I just do in my own home studio, um, which is just a little, nothing of a studio, but um, it's good enough for me to write. Um, But yeah, I really love producing I'd like to do more of that. Um, And I think that, you know, definitely I've progressed in my songwriting and and subject matter of my songwriting as I've, through the years and whatever I'm going through. Because it's like, you know, music's my therapy. It's just like how I get my emotions out and deal with that. Um, So the album that's, that's upcoming was all written and recorded before 1994, I think, or into 1994 at the latest. Um, So these are songs that I wrote in my 20s and recorded in my 20s. And what I don't, what's been interesting about this process, I've wanted to put this record out since it was written. Um, I believe really strongly in this record. I like it. Uh, The title is In the Name of Love and they're all songs about different aspects of love and um and there's variety like there was on the first album you'll you can expect that from me every time i'm not going to give you an album that's just the same song over and over again over and over. <laughs> hold you tight and peace of my heart sounded really similar that was very intentional the rest of the songs are completely different yeah um right. you know there's a little bit of rock edge there's a little bit of like heavier kind of hip hop influence. There's some uh, new Jack swing. There's like, there's all kinds of different things going on in the pop R and B realm. But 
I always like my album to feel like you're listening to the radio. Yes, you right. Have a little more variety. Or exactly. I get, bored, I get bored listening to albums that just sound like the same type of song, same type of song, same type of song over and over and over again. Exactly. So what's been interesting about this process is that I'm taking all this music from DAT tapes. You remember DAT tapes. Oh, sure. Okay. So if you guys out there don't know, it's kind of like a cassette tape, but a little higher quality and a little smaller. And that's what we used to down, you know, save all our mixes at the end of the day to a DAT tape. So what I have, the, all the reels are gone. They're all gone completely. They were in a storage facility that ended up going bye-bye. And uh, so they are, they are no longer, they were not in my, in my possession or in my control. Uh, so they're gone, but I did have these DAT tapes and a couple of the songs are off cassette tape too. So my, I've been listening, I've pulled out a lot of cassettes. I've been listening to cassettes that I made where I used to, you know, I work in radio and television, but I, yeah. In the high school years and and all and oh, college, wow. I would we would always you'd spend hours recording songs off the radio onto cassette, and then oh, play yeah. them in the cars or on the mixtapes. Yeah, your own. And I'm listening to them. I'm <laughs> like, my God, that sounds really good. Right? And and the warmth and the fidelity and just yeah. how it sounds. And how it sounds on the stereo. I, you know, I have the Onkyo stereo system. Oh, so wow. I've, I've got the receiver, the double cassette deck, the turntable, the KLH speakers. Because I like my music. I don't like it shoved in my ear. Mm. You know, I like yeah. it around me, sort of surrounding me. And I've talked about it on the show with a couple of guests, uh, musicians. I like, I like where it fills the room. And it's bouncing off the walls, mm -hmm. almost like yeah. a studio studio sort of feeling. Which brings us to another really interesting thing, Jim. Yes. So, um, another I JMS have, exclusive. Another exclusive. <laughs> so um, I had the opportunity to work with Tom Capone on a um, Scarface record. It has come out. And I don't know if it ever will. But um, at the Atmos studio in San Francisco, Dolby Atmos. So if y'all know about Dolby Atmos, you know, you do know because you go to the movies or you used to go to the movies. <laughs> we all used to go. <laughs> um, but uh, two so years has been the twilight zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my God, the past couple of years, I want to tell you. Um, so it's surround sound, right? Yes. So I have been in the studio at this fabulous studio called um, Just for the Record in LA. That a great name for a studio. I love when they come up with names like that. They're very clever young people that are super talented. Just for the name. record. <laughs> and so they have an Atmos studio there. So they, they are working on an Atmos mix for me. So um, wow. that will be to come for, um, for Hold You Tight. The, the LPs are coming back you're seeing the vinyl returning. I would love to put this stuff on vinyl, especially the album. Like, I'd love to do the album on vinyl. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see how that all goes down. Um, cause I'm just like, I'm, I feel like I'm a brand new artist in a way, you know, because I'm just starting out as an independent artist. And like I said before, like, I never even shopped for a deal. Like, I don't really don't know anything about that part of it. Yeah. Putting yeah. stuff out there and everybody who knows me and follows me knows that I'm not super active on the social media platforms. Right, right. Which no. I am, yeah. you know, I'm 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 gearing up. <laughs> <laughs> dip dip in up, the toes in. We're ready. I'm gonna start <laughs> blowing you up. You're gonna be like, why won't she go away? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, gang. Um I would imagine too that you still heard from people like the whatever happened to Tara Kemp. You still heard from people throughout, right? Didn't didn't you bump into people? Um, I don't know at gatherings, parties, in the supermarket, or whatever. Like, hey, you know, where are you? Or, or we want more. Or, we want more. We love what you do. We're here. We support you. We want more. I would imagine over the years 
you you were hearing that from people, either colleagues or, or super fans, whatever it may be, huh? Mostly from fans, you know, and people don't typically like recognize me on the street. That's only happened like a couple times. Um, like I said, I'm always shocked when someone remembers me or, you know, thinks I'm a celebrity or something like that. Um, cause I don't think of myself like that. Um, but my fans. Okay. And like Jeff Bailey, who, uh, posted at the very beginning, you put up at the very beginning. He was one of the first ones who was like, Dara, put out more music, put out more music. And he's heard some of this stuff on this second album, actually. Um, a, a few of my fans have heard that, heard some of the stuff and given me some input on, on it. But, um, but it's like the fans encouraging me and then just, you know, I, the, while the, business side of the music business is super sucky. The creative side of the music business is fantastic. It's like Disneyland for adults, you know? Mm -hmm. So yep, um, yep. that part of it is, is super fun and getting to write with other really talented artists. Um, and also with, uh, even with Jake and Tuheen, you know, when we got signed, like I said, it happened very quickly. We weren't planning on working together. You weren't, no. We weren't. We didn't have a catalog of material together as a team. And so once we got signed, we had like literally literally six weeks to write and record the album. Mm. So that's what we threw six together. Weeks. Six weeks. So that was a very quick turnaround. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, you know, so... And also because Jake and Tahine and I were just starting to work together, they didn't really know as much about me as an artist as they did mm -hmm. once we started working on the second album, because they had seen mm -hmm. me go out and do all this music with a live band. Um, uh, they got it that I'm like, I like live instrumentation. I want a live bass. I yeah. want, you know, I want some some live percussion let's like get yeah. some live instruments the musicians actually there doing it right yeah. so this second out this second album has a lot more of that there's a lot more live instrumentation there's a lot more i think of me in this album than the last album I'm not saying I, I wasn't in there but like this is i think we have i think we ended up settling on about 13 songs Mm. And two of the only two of those songs I didn't write, but I did curate. I like, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I, well, I, I mean, you, know, you think about all, of, all of those kind of artists, like Melissa Manchester, right? When I would mm. I would come home from school every day in high school, of course, horrible teenage angst, and. Um, and who were you yeah. listening to then at that time? Oh, what? Barbara Streisand, Melissa Manchester. Um, Elton John, um, the Commodores in high school. Also, it was like by that time we were getting into um, Toto. <laughs> Toto, yes. Um, Did you see and, who we had on uh, the other night? No. Leland Sklar, who's the bassist oh, from Toto. Wow. He's oh, he's actually I think even today on his way around the country with Lyle Lovett on tour. Now we had a little window oh, wow. in between. We had a little window in between him coming back from France at just two days ago and leaving to go on a full rest of the year tour with Lyle Lovett, wow. which he's on now. Oh, and he was that. here and he was with Toto and uh, James Taylor and the immediate family okay. and just on and on and on and on. And uh, another, a great guy too. He said he, which I'm sure you real you too, not necessarily talking about the record companies, but talking about the fellow performers and musicians. Yeah. And he's like, we're all one half. We're, we're a family. We uh, work together. Yeah. We support each other. You find that it's, similar to see this whole idea that artists are in competition with each other. Cause it's really not true. Um, my experience on that level, at least, you know, sometimes on a community level, there'll be a little bit of, 
uh, jealousy and stuff like that. On that on that level, it's none of that. Everybody is so supportive. Everybody is so welcoming. And um, yeah, I have I've had nothing but great experiences with other artists and and musicians radio people everybody else in the business the only issue the only things that what was unfun about it was the the business part of it you know yeah, yeah. And, um, it still makes you sweat huh <laughs> <laughs> just talking about it uh, she, pers <laughs> she perspires Her blood pressure elevates <laughs> right um no, I mean, it was just, a, a, you know, getting back to the whole thing about, you know, manifesting, right? If you're manifesting. Yes. We know Is that, that a whole thing that you've gone into? Are you studying? Do you do meditation? Are I you do. in? I meditate. Yeah. That's a so, beautiful I, world. This has, been, this has been something I've been um, very connected with my whole life. Um, yes. With spirituality and just... Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't really understand and know anything about the secret or manifesting so much, but just like the power of positive thinking and, and just like, I think I just always, from the time I was really young, I just knew that this, that I wanted to be an entertainer and that I wanted to mm. be a performer. That was just something that was, I knew was my destiny. That was right. where I was going to go. Um, but yeah, so having that kind of, Knowing, I think, is a really big, is a key element. If you really feel and believe that that is meant for you, mm -hmm. I think that's a really key element. The other thing is you got to feel good about it. And I think that's another reason why things kind of fell apart with the music business is because it turned into something that wasn't fun anymore. You know, yeah, I, yeah. It, it, were, it was becoming stressful and drudgery to deal with you know it's like working on the second album I'm like i'm all excited about this music that i'm working on they're totally not getting it and you hear about this all the time creative differences why yes. are there creative differences with artists y'all have no business trying to tell an artist how to express themselves i mean it's, i am sure yeah. i i have a hard time and maybe you can ask melissa this when you talk to her did anybody ever make her sing a song she didn't want to sing did um you know, Barbara Streisand, I doubt seriously that somebody else picked songs for her. I don't think so. I don't either. I don't think so. You know, so I don't understand that part of it where I understand the market, you know, the, the marketing part of it. And I think that that's where the, the business needs to be at is in the marketing of the art that the artist is creating. Well, look what happened like over the years with, uh, you know, Britney Spears and her, you know, the, and what was it? Was it New Kids on the Block where the manager sort of oh, stole so much money? Took from all them. the money and just, you know, they had to sue him and all of this Her happened. And right. yeah, he made him big and he made them stars and what have you. But, <laughs> and, and they've been, some have been able to, you know, parlay on that, but still. Yeah they were supposed to get what they earned or created and that doesn't right. always happen. So sometimes, so the burnout comes when you feel used, like you're, you're in it because you're reflecting who Tara is and you're right. allowing yourself to open up elements of yourself to the world, a lot of emotion in the song and in the performance mm -hmm. to the world and sometimes people feel, whether it's in music or in any aspect of life, like that's being trampled on. It's being taken advantage of. Like people don't realize that if you didn't do what you did, that money wouldn't be coming in. Those tickets wouldn't be selling. That song wouldn't be right. the hit if you weren't also the entity that it's all revolved around. They forget right. about sometimes the individual that the whole thing, the name on the, on the album, on the show, on whatever. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. sometimes they don't even understand what an artist is and what they do. You know, you become um, just like, a, with um, like songwriting and all that stuff too, is that, you know, they're, 
that stuff comes from a different place. That's inspirational. Like there is a certain amount of technique. I mean, I, I learned how to read music before I learned how to read English. Um, so I have a very heavy yes. music background. But um, in sync, I think was uh, Steve popped in. Was it either? Yeah, I think I said New Kids on the Block. I think it was either in sync or Backstreet Boys. One of them. They had the boys. issue. <laughs> yeah. Backstreet Boys. <laughs> it, was, it was one of right. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's a, Steve's you. now a lovety. He's paying attention. He's following <laughs> along. We love that. He's a JMS lovety now with all the others. <laughs> but I think that, so, you know, I started out wanting to be an actress and I started studying at American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco when I was nine. And I studied there for three years and then I studied for a year at San Francisco Attic Theater. And then I went back to ACT after I graduated high school and went to the adult program, uh, summer program there. And um, so one of the things they were really driving home in acting is, you know, you have to expose yourself, you're opening yourself up and um, putting yourself out there. And I'm thinking, yeah, but still hiding behind a character, you know, there's still a character, even if you're embodying that character, you are, you still are not, hey, this you. is me, you're, you're yeah. being hide behind, you have the mask. I get that. I guess so that. I was like, so if that is the goal of art is to expose yourself, then let me focus on the because I was like, what am I gonna what am I am I do the acting, am I do the music, what do I what do I want to do? Right. So that's when music won. Because I felt like, okay, so that's really being out there. Yeah. You yeah. writing your own music and singing your own stuff. And one of the things that um that I think is for an artist, like we're compelled to write about our emotions, right? Oh yeah. A yeah. lot of us suffer from depression or ADHD and you know, I'm guilty, but, um, perfectionism, all of it, all of it. Yeah. Um, so, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, so the, um, that expression, isn't something everyone has the ability to do to express themselves that way. It was one of the reasons why That's right. song becomes so important to us because we relate to that song, right? So we're like, don't cry out loud. I played that song every day when I got home from school, when I was in high school. Yeah. Just saying my heart out. And that was just like, ugh, just was such a release for me. It was such so therapeutic for me. So I see myself as just like, I'm just a human being like everybody else. And we all are going through these same feelings, right? And so if I can express those feelings in a way that it connects to the listener and they're like, oh yeah, that's just how I feel today. Or, you know, that's the goal. That's where, right. to me, that's, that's where it's at as an mm. artist. So. I don't see somebody else coming in and intervening in that. I understand you want to make money and you want to like make me look crazy, but I'm not, that's not what I'm here for. And so, yeah, that's, I think that's one of the reasons why I was thinking about either the Backstreet Boys in sync situation was oftentimes when artists are just coming out of the gate in the beginning, they'll have the people, the entourage around them who will sort of, mold them into what they think is marketable and what they yeah. think will sell and what that image sort of is. Some people have said that about Whitney Houston in a way sometimes with that incredible voice that she was sort of marketing it in a certain way, presented in a certain way. And, and, and kind of like Joan Crawford. I mean, Joan Crawford said, I am always going to be, not Lucille Lucerne from Texas. I'm going to be Joan Crawford from Hollywood. Right. And I will always, you will always see me as Joan Crawford. You'll never see me like in the supermarket, not as Joan Crawford. I'm going to be that character that has been right. created that I'm living. Right. And uh, a really interesting. So for you, that's not your ticket. You want terror wants to be terror, which is, I can identify with that because I've done acting and everything too. And 
I've always said, people say, well, what, what's your favorite role? I said, you know what my favorite role is? Playing myself. My, my favorite role is playing me. <laughs> That's my favorite. Jim Masters uh, filling in today for Jim Masters. Right. And it's probably right. why I'm a host <laughs> and an on-air personality yeah. because I'm me. Uh, right. I'm not me, you know, playing the other and person. And you're a connector too. Yes. Yeah. And, and like. You want to connect with people. Like you, my desire to connect and relate and inspire and entertain and inform and, and, mm -hmm. and resonate is so strong that I would feel dwarfed, I think, if I was behind some other veil. Right. If I was doing today, I'm, you know, uh, I'm Walter today. Uh, and I'm a businessman and I'm now on a subway somewhere and I'm playing right. this part, you know, and, and I could do it, but I, I don't know. So I've actually been cast in movies and things as playing yourself. the part of, uh, as the on-air personal agent masters, the That's news anchor, that. the on-air personality, yeah. sometimes the doctor, sometimes the good guy next door, sometimes the best friend, the boyfriend, the, yeah. you know, but, it's cool when it's like, Jim, we want you to be you. you. Right. <laughs> and and so that's you. That's what you want. It's a free feeling. Yeah. It's a, it's a great, but acting is really fun too. It is so fun to play other characters. And, you know, I love that. It's you like get to play versions of yourself in one life, right? Cause you get to immerse yourself in a character and become yes. completely different than yourself. And get away with things you would never and be get able to get with away with like as you. you. Right. Never do. <laughs> So that I love acting. I'd love to do some acting again. I would you like to do more? more? Yeah. I would love to. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to. Now, are you pursuing it? Is there any possibility I, of that? I am pursuing it. You are actually. pursuing it. Mm -hmm. I'm pursuing everything now. <laughs> My son's 20. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I still have responsibilities, but um, and uh, and with my mom as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's been through a rough, this, this past year has been really rough on my mom. How, ha how have you been just with everything that's been going on in the last two to three years? I mean, you're oh gosh, somebody yeah. who's, you know, you're, you're like people and you're a performer and you're, and the world stopped and now so much has changed and it's, you know, it's changing by the hour now. Everything's ramped up and really changing. You it's know, really changing. The inflation, the war. Yeah. I mean, there's all this crazy stuff that's happening, the health situation. And um, it's really given us pause. I mean, a lot of people want to go back to the 90s and the 80s yep. you know, or the 70s or whatever. Um, but it's given us pause to really reflect and realize that we, uh, kindness and empathy and and being together and unified is so important. What are some things you learned about Tara during all of this crazy time, the last two to three years? I learned this, especially this past year, I learned how strong I am, I think. Um, it was a really, it's been a tough couple years um, for, for everybody. All of us has, have had a rough couple of years. But in my family, my mom's been really ill and um, so in the end of August, she had a heart attack. And in September, she had a triple bypass surgery. Mm. So that's been difficult. I'm currently, my house is under construction. It's been under construction since September. Um, renovating my downstairs. You know, I have a duplex, an old Victorian um, in Berkeley. And so I'm renovating the downstairs to move my mom in. Mm. Um, that's nice. Yeah. I, I, you know. I like, I'm a big fan of the whole extended family living thing. I think it's, yeah. really cool. mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, especially this day and age with how expensive everything is. Yes. So crazy. Um, so I'm lucky that I got my house um, and it's actually got, has three levels. So my son is in the attic. My mom will be downstairs and I'm sandwiched in between them. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you could either bang on the ceiling or bang on the floor if they're making too noise. Knock uh, it off up there. That's what Knock I think. Knock it off like down the there. The is insulating, heavily, ins heavily insulating in between floors. 
So you can't I, hear any snoring of anybody. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to hear anything, and I don't want them hearing anything either. <laughs> <laughs> I started at my mom, folks. Okay. <laughs> When you're doing your vocal exercises and things of that nature. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Have you ever thought of going into comedy? No. <laughs> <laughs> My father has always said I should have. Jim, you should have gone into comedy. <laughs> and you were but life, life is so, to me, life is just hilarious. Yeah. yeah. You know? oh. And a lot of times you just have to lie. You just have to laugh so you don't cry. You know, it's just like, oh, really? something else. And for a while there, I had so much on my plate. My friends were like, girl, you don't have a lot on your plate. You've got a all you can eat buffet. It's like, <laughs> have so you thought cool. of writing a book or <laughs> doing anything on the whole story? You know, the whole, I have thought about gold record selling billboard charting the whole story of the uh, Tara mm -hmm. Kemp. I have thought about doing that. Um, yeah. Could be inspiring to others. Yeah. I might do it. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm interested in doing that. I'm. I have to. I think she faded to black. <laughs> I think her. Uh, her, th maybe she'll get back in. I. She's there, but her. Her box disappeared, her, not her box, her screen disappeared. So we did get information that she's thinking about writing a book. Tara, if you can hear me, your video went out. Um, her microphone is still on. I can see down in the little screen here. We got a little cue window here. So she's probably like, wait a minute. <laughs> that was what you, that wasn't what you call a fade the black. Oh. oh, there you are. There you are. That wasn't a fade the black. That was a... <laughs> There we were. Is there, um, well, you know, the heat there is like in the 90s where she is. I mean, she's in Northern California, Southern California, for those watching Southern California. I mean, I'm seeing temperatures in Palm Springs of 114, 110 in Los Angeles and places like Arizona, Nevada. We'll, we'll still be here. I know you're trying to figure it out, Tara. It's live. Anything can happen. And, you okay. know. There you are. <laughs> is it, um, I wonder if it, is it the Wi-Fi or possibly maybe a battery? Um, it's probably like the Wi-Fi signal. But, um, but we'll vamp. We'll continue vamping. It's probably something that came loose. Doesn't it seem like something might have come loose a little bit? That's just taking the picture off. You probably hear me, but we can't hear you and we don't see you. Uh, it looks like, you know, you've floated out to, uh, you're in a, the black hole there. You've floated out to space. <laughs> Maybe I should do a, an episode this way where I'm just talking to an imaginary guest. Do you think that would be cool? <laughs> just me pretending to be talking to somebody who isn't there. And I can actually make up whoever the person, I can create a character. I've done that before, actually, in the career. I could just I used to write short stories. I still write short stories, actually. And I could create a fictitious character and I can pretend that I'm talking to somebody there. Like, you know, this is sort of like not the witness protection program, but you know, when they blur the picture or you just hear the audio, like on a newscast or a documentary or investigative piece where, you know, the person's there, but you don't see them. You just hear their voice because they're revealing secret information or something. It's kind of like that. She'll she'll find her way back in. Something must have happened with her Wi-Fi because it's like 90 degrees plus there and humid. And you saw that she was dabbing herself even with, I don't know if she has AC on there or not, but uh, here she is. She's coming back. Hey. Welcome oh, my gosh. Back. What happened? I, was, I don't know. It must have been oh, the yeah. heat, I guess, huh? I no, I think my computer's overheating. <laughs> you think the computer's overheating? <laughs> I was going to say, it, it, you know, it's probably the, uh, you know, the humidity and the heat. Is there AC in there or? No, we don't have AC in the Bay Area. There's no AC in the Bay Area? 
because you open the windows and you get, it's, yeah we're, we're right here by the usually office. you get the breeze like, and we get the fog we get the nice breeze. It's like mist and always except, perfect weather but like global warming <laughs> <laughs> we got to get an air conditioner now. We're coming to you live from Tara Kemp's uh, sauna. <laughs> sauna, sauna in Berkeley. Berkeley she's, sauna. she's her own makeup artist today. She dabs herself and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about um, possible book and you know movie yeah. documentary on Tara Kemp's story. I would like to. I I've thought about it. Um, yeah, I would like to be the one to tell that story, you know, because um, I know there are some biographies out there about me. Um, so, yeah, I have thought about it. Uh, we'll see. I think that right now, the first thing I need to really sink my teeth into is getting into social media and getting comfortable with those platforms and connecting with people in that way. Mm. Um, showing them pictures of your grilled cheese sandwich and your pancakes in the morning. And <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I've been, I've been watching TikTok. I like TikTok a lot. Um, and, um, you know, see, it's fun because it's videos, it's all videos and quick, it's quick hits. stuff. Yeah. Quick, quick hits. Stuff, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I've learned a lot of stuff on there, like a lot of really good tips on, on the TikTok. Like what would be one? Uh, one of the ones that I just implemented is, so I love avocados. Avocados are great. And I have an avocado tree. Here's but, another exclusive folks. Like there we go. JMS exclusive avocado tips avocado from Tara Kim. Tips. <laughs> so here's your avocado tip from TikTok actually. Um, so avocados, I don't know if you know this, but avocados do not ripen on the tree. They ripen after they, you take them off the tree. Right. And uh, the best way to ripen them is to put them in a brown paper bag. Mm -hmm. Once they are ripe, this is the TikTok tip. You put them in a large like mason jar of cold water. Put, put your ripe avocados in the cold water, close it up, put it in the refrigerator, and they will stay ripe. They will not over ripen, which is a big problem with avocados. If you like avocados, you know what I'm talking about. Mm hmm right? Nothing worse than an over ripened avocado. Ooh, it's so sad, isn't it? It's like, oh my God, all that good, all that goodness went to waste. Yeah. I was told the same thing. I remember my uncle with his garden uh, in Connecticut, he would take the tomatoes that were green and put them in a paper bag in exactly. a dark room and that would cause them to ripen. Don't yeah. want fruits to touch each other either. They had to be separate. Exactly. Like Isn't that don't something? Put avocados in one bag. They all now, do you have a garden, or are you a gardener with green thumb? I love the garden. I don't have a garden right now. I just moved back to my house um, about two, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Just, I, I mean, I'm really still new back to the house. This, I, it was all a rental before. Yeah. Um, I rented everything out when I moved to LA, and um, and that's what made it possible for me to be a stay at home mom and all that kind of stuff. But, um, uh, I would love to plant a garden that mm -hmm. is on the agenda and my soil is really, really good here. I had, I did have a garden here before when I bought the book. I was talking about her garden. Looks like she froze there a little bit. It's a very interesting freeze frame. <laughs> she was talking about, did you, love it, did you jot down the avocado tip? I mean, that was amazing. <laughs> So she's frozen in time there, it seems. Hopefully it'll unfreeze. Yeah, she must be having some... Uh, it, it's very warm where she is, and there's no air conditioning in that house. So her computer 
was probably smoking and steaming in the back. <laughs> it's uh, what a great conversation, huh? For those of you who remember Tara from the 90s, there's some great photos. And when she comes back, we'll ask her about them. This one we showed earlier again. Singer, songwriter, 90s Billboard chart topping, gold record selling R&B recording artist and those hits. And what I think is really cool about the conversation is her openness about the industry, about what she's done with her life since uh, some of the inspirations early on for her. But also, I think um, the fact that she's putting a whole album together, sort of bringing back some of the music because people have been asking for it. And I think that's really, really cool. That's something actually quite special. And uh, she is very, very excited about it. Fun conversation. Kathleen is enjoying it as well. Steve is enjoying it too. Juanita says she loves avocados. They don't have a chance to get overripe. Yes. When you do it that way, exactly the way she she said with the uh, putting them in the actual bag. But um, she mentioned too, you know, that um, we got some really cool shots here. Her son, believe it or not, her son, she said, I think she said her son is in his 20s now. And he's uh, creating music for the video game industry. Here's some more shots over the time as well. That nice. These are uh, exclusive shots that she sent to us here for our show. That's with her son. And her son's father is actor Joe Finfera, who you remember was a guest just a few weeks ago on the Gym Masters show live. And he was also a guest of ours about a year ago. He's been with us twice, Joe Finfera, fabulous actor. Matter of fact, he's in a new movie with some major stars. I think it's a Lifetime or Hallmark movie, Joe. Here's some other great shots with Tara in the studio on set. Cool stuff, huh? another and there she is with her son once again which again these shots came exclusively uh to us from tara which is really nice look at that shot huh it's a really nice one there's another one that goes back Paris in spring. Another fabulous shot. If she ends up connecting again, we can ask her about some of these. But I'll ask her anyway because we'll be chatting. But just some really cool shots. There she was with the family, and I believe that's her mother with her son. That's a really nice shot, huh? And when she was pregnant, I mean, that's a beautiful shot, huh? For her to share that with us is a beautiful thing. These aren't shots that are really generally seen. Cool hairstyle. We showed some of these earlier, some of the earlier music from the 90s, some of the covers, which were really cool. This is one. Warner Music. That's a really cool shot. Sort of like a retro look to it, huh? Absolutely. They really are, they really are great shots, aren't they, gang? She sent these to us exclusively. There's another great one. There's another. And another. Is that these go back to the 90s. And there's ours. <laughs> yeah. You'll now you'll probably be Googling uh, and you'll remember some of the music. If not, maybe it was the very first time. 
that you heard about her. Maybe you're new to the scene and you weren't aware of her music in the 90s. And now here she is. Um, yeah, some of these some of these shots are really, really amazing. While we're here, I just want to let you know a couple of really cool things. I mentioned that tomorrow another legend is joining us live from Las Vegas. Legendary comedian and actress and singer. She does an extraordinary Joan Rivers. She's been doing this for like 40 years. Uh, she is very popular in Vegas right now, too. She always has been. Barbara Brighton is going to be with us at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. She's going to make us laugh. We're going to go down memory lane with this legend. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I also want to let you know that on Sunday, we have two shows. Yes, we have an afternoon show with Barbara J. Garshman. Now, if you're not familiar with her, she is a prolific writer. She's author of You Can't Stop Me. We're going to talk about that. But she also was one of the key figures for NBC Primetime Entertainment. She's responsible for hundreds of hours of television shows, movies, miniseries on the NBC television network, as well as ABC. She also was a writer for Another World, the soap opera, Days of Our Lives, the soap opera, and um, supervising producer for years and won Emmys for Guiding Light, the soap opera. I mean, she was in the thick of the soap opera world, but also responsible for so many television shows because she was um, in the development department, I think like vice president of uh, president of the development primetime entertainment development for the NBC television network. And then also working with ABC and, but she has a new book out. She's a wonderful writer and it's a very inspiring and a riveting and moving book. I don't want to give too much away. She'll be with us on Sunday at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, a little bit earlier. It's an afternoon edition of the Gym Master Show Live. This Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. So get your cup of coffee and your toast and join us um, for an earlier episode. That is Sunday. So coming up again on Saturday night, it's going to be perfect. Comedy, legend, Barbara Brighton is with us. Then on Sunday afternoon, five-time Emmy-nominated television producer, writer, author, Barbara J. Garshman is going to be with us, and we're honored to have her here. She is a very prominent figure. And then on Sunday night, Melissa Manchester returns to the Gym Masters show live to announce some really exciting news about the, re -rela about the release for the first time of unreleased music back from 1977 called Live 77 and much more. We're going to catch up with her. See how she's doing since we chatted last. If you didn't see the full episode that we did about, what was it, about a year ago, maybe less than that, where Melissa Manchester was with us and we had an epic extended conversation. You can see it on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Just go back in. So she's with us this Sunday for a return visit at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So two shows, television legend, writer, author, five-time Emmy-nominated TV producer, and more, responsible for some of your favorite shows and soap operas, miniseries, movies, the development of them on the TV networks. Barbara will be with us. Then Melissa, all on Sunday. Then on Monday, Kayleen Peoples is with us acclaimed vocalist, musician, composer, and former Miss California. She's extraordinary. She's going to be with us as well. That's Monday. And then on Tuesday, look who's joining us. John Davidson is returning, legendary TV and game show host, singer, songwriter, actor, entertainer. You know John Davidson, Hollywood Squares, That's Incredible, and all these other great, great programs. And he's got a cool place in New Hampshire called Club Sandwich. Uh, I went there uh, last July. We visited him performing and uh, he is really, really a cool guy. And we really enjoyed uh, 
chatting with them and so much more. And guess what? Talk about being a resilient person and a trooper. Look who's back. <laughs> hey. Did you just go it's to- It's really hot here, you guys. I was going to say, did you just go outside? Maybe you needed to run in the sprinkler a little bit to right. cool off. You know, my computer got- So now if you'll hear a little fan in the background. I've got the fan going on the computer. It's so hot here. So the computer my was- computer uh, overheated. <laughs> <laughs> it overheated, so that's what it was doing, huh? It was like going in and out. <laughs> so I was just vamping. I was telling him about Melissa coming Sunday, and oh, I forgot and one John other. John Davidson, hey. Davidson on Wednesday, and I love uh, John Davidson. He's terrific. Such a great guy, and uh, I forgot to mention, gang. Tony Orlando is with us on Tuesday. Orlando. Tony Orlando. Tie a yellow ribbon around the old one. Knock three times. Candida. <laughs> he's huge in Vegas too. I tell you, uh, he's wow. he's a he's a fabulous guy. Real super talent, and he does a show on Sunday nights on WABC in New York City. He's got his own radio show, playing all the hits and bringing people in. It's cool stuff. So you left off where you were talking about the possible book and movie and type of thing. Um, and then we were taking a look at some before you went to uh, make sure that the lemonade stand outside your house was still making money. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we were showing some fabulous photos here. Maybe you can take us through. Oh, yeah. So that's my seeing. mom. That's me and my mom and my Beautiful. son, Joshua. We're in, um, that's a picture of us in Maui. He's about four. That's a beautiful picture. shot. That's a lot of, we call that levity around here. That's a lot of that's levity. Not, that's a lot of levity. Going so on. is, so is this shot. Same trip that's, um, in, um, that's on Maui. And, um, he loves you. Now. He does. He's yeah. Uh huh. That's a beautiful <laughs> shot too, huh? Behind you, the. See the volcano back there? Yeah. That's, the vo that's a volcano. We were showing this one earlier, too. That's me and Will, writer of Hold You Tight in his man cave studio in his backyard. So, the writer <laughs> of that song that everybody loves. Yes. Really, really cool. Here's another one, too, you sent along. Is so this is, um, this is me performing. This is for the Rosie Gaines benefit that we did. Oh and yeah. The person that I'm looking at right there, that's Latoya Gaines. That's Rosie's daughter. Um, on the right hand side, um, that's Jaguar Wright. And um and Maxine Jones on the left from In Vogue. Wow. From In Vogue. Wow. Quite a group there. Yeah. That's another great shot. Yeah. Tower of Power. There's Dwayne uh, and a young musician that he uh, mentors. Uh, that's another event that we went to. Um, that's the poster for the Rosie Gaines event. Which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. This is a great shot. We showed this a lot earlier too. It's cool what you did with your hair, huh? Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, you know, my hair is just everywhere. And so yeah. it's really nice when I perform to just stick it up. So right it just, it's not in my face it doesn't get messed up um that was backstage that one uh was that backstage at yoshi's at, that uh, was backstage Tony, Tony, look, Tony, look at this one so that's from the gorgeous project um which i did i was the art director on that i'm fluffing hair in this picture but uh art director on that project um did you enjoy doing that being the art director oh i love that yeah, yeah anything creative i paint i draw i like i i'm very artistic i like anything so you have a lot of outlets yeah to express yourself all of, all of that stuff oh that's so i cool. did this project with my my friend rob lebeau um and this uh it's just, it's just about gender roles and um this is um an artist named Bible Girl in this picture that I'm with. This is when she was in New York. I think she's moved down to um, in LA now. In LA. But you know, gender bending and just, you know, 
exploring different roles. That's Tim Christensen and um, Jaguar Wright with me. That's backstage at the Paramount, I think. Cool. Um, me, Josh, yeah. my mom, and Ace. And that picture, that's a different location, though. There's my piano in the back. That's the piano. In L.A. Mm -hmm. Is the piano behind you now, too? No, my piano is in storage right now because of the. What's concert. behind you there? Behind is that me just... is my desk. Oh, that's a desk. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, it looks like, it, from what I see, there's the edge. It's a beautiful piano. It, it is a beautiful mm -hmm. piano. That is a, a play -out piano from the 1920s, Art Deco. It's covered with uh, pearl wood veneer. And that was um, something that my dad left me. That is really nice. So, um, it's and very, you play it? Special. You play? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You play. Do you play multiple instruments? I do. I play uh, piano and harp. Harp. Um, what a and, great one. Yeah. And congos. And um, yes. I did play flute when I was a kid in school bands, but don't ask me to play flute. I'm right. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not play that instrument. I can't I play that instrument anymore. I want to learn to play guitar. Yeah. I don't play yeah. guitar. I've never learned to play guitar. It's such a great instrument to travel. It's a great with. instrument. Um, you can write it's yeah, exactly. You can so just take beautiful. it out and start going with it. Uh, in school as a kid, we it was violin that we took. That was that was Oh, that's a hard instrument. That's a hard one. Yeah. Hard that is one. not an easy one. You no. start out How many years did you do violin? <laughs> that was about four. That was about through years, school. Yeah. yeah, through the uh, junior high into high. Mm -hmm. And it was great. It's great training, you know. It, it, it really is. It's fantastic training. Classical music is really, That's I think, so shot. enriching. Yes. For kids to have growing up. Oh, that's the L.A. family. <laughs> that so is cool. This is, these are, this is my family in L.A. And these three kids in front, that's Joshua, Jordan, and Hile. They all kind of grew up together. We're really lucky that... Um, me and these two beautiful women here, Vanessa Williams, the actress. Um, and below her, that's her son, Hile. And then over here, uh, that's Nikki Harris. Um, she's best known uh, for singing backup for Madonna, but she is an incredible vocalist, um, has amazing jag jazz records out. She's doing a lot of jazz now, but she also sings gospel and dance. Her daughter Jordan, and that's Jay King, the Jordan's dad, Jay King from um, Club Nouveau. Oh yeah. Linda Posnick, a phenomenal uh, photographer, and um, Carlton Wilburn, who was who danced with Madonna. Very good, close friends with uh, Nikki. So that's Very like the, cool. the L.A. family. That's the Nikki LA. just sent it to all of us the other day. It was so cute. She sent a little group text, sent the picture. She's like, where does the time go? <laughs> like, thank God we all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we showed this earlier. This was a great shot, like a Warner promo, sort of retro. That's a cool that shot. That was from the video of Hold You Tight. Yeah. And I'm actually, you can't see in the, what I'm wearing, but I'm wearing, I still have this actually. It's a, um, a black turtleneck with black sequins on the front. Very like, you know, stretchy, that, that kind of stuff that everybody wore back in the nineties, stretchy stuff. Right. Exactly. Another cool yeah. one. Another one from the, um, so that was, so when I, I did this photo session in, uh, New York when I was recording, um, and it was like my first professional photo shoot that that I had ever done. That was another shoot. That's yeah. That one That's was a, fun. Yeah. Um, That's a great the shot. The guy that did my hair did like uh, Pamela Anderson's hair, and that's what I was going for, like a Pamela Anderson kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. That's a terrific shot. And then we were showing yeah. some of the uh, these covers too. Yeah, so the cover, so they don't really want to show me, you know, it's the age old thing. You hear this a lot about um, Melissa it mentioned this in her interview, right? They're like, mm -hmm. oh, 
capitalize on the fact that she sounds black and like not let people know that she's white or not show what she looks like was kind of the vibe. That was part of the thing like, where people sign her because is it that they, they assumed thought, they you were she was black, but she and she wasn't right. Did they assume you were too, or I think that yeah, people when they heard me assumed that I was black, which is weird because like how can you sound like a color of skin? It's just silly, but um, that's right. Yeah, it, the yeah. whole race thing doesn't even make sense. No, I, I don't even understand any of it. Doesn't make any sense to me at all. It's no different than having blue eyes, or I mean, our life experiences are different because you know, people of color don't have the same advantages as people who are white, which is ridiculous, also. Um, but you know, I've been I've been living in or around Berkeley. I mean, I. I grew up in Livermore and um, then I moved to San Francisco and then I moved to Berkeley and working in Rosie's game in Rosie's band and which was an interracial band. No, most of the bands that I've, I haven't worked in many bands that were one race and typically musicians are very colorblind when it comes to race. It's not really, they're aware of the perception, especially around here, like people, it, here like to have culturally diverse groups because they want that to be seen. They want people to see diversity. Um, for the most part, musicians are really don't care mm -hmm. about race. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah they shouldn't. Yeah. I agree hundred percent. Absolutely. We all, we all have something to contribute and, uh, and boy, it's so great when we all play together and we yeah, all and we're all work equally together. Powerful. We're all here by the by the simple fact together. that we're here. Yes. We are all valuable. Every single one of us that is here is important, is necessary, is valuable. And I wish that we would start acting more like that as a society, you know, and really honoring people and having more respect. There's just seems like there's just no respect or compassion or empathy anymore in the world. It's so weird. Everybody's so ramped up and angry and everybody's attacking one another and running and grabbing and yes, stealing all the toilet paper off the shell <laughs> type situation. <laughs> it's I like, <laughs> I got a good day folks. Yeah. I highly recommend. <laughs> you know, Happy it's like, day. The manager of the supermarket I comes. Always clean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's never the butt of the joke. I'm never the butt of the joke. Yeah. No. It's, it's like you know that the the, uh, the manager of the supermarket goes out to lunch for his hour lunch. And, you know, they just got a new shipment of toilet paper in when it was very, it was a hot commodity. Now everything is becoming like a hot commodity because of the oh, shortages. Yeah. Of but everything. they're saying the potato chip bags are now shrinking, but for the same amount of money. Popcorn, now there's a huge shortage of popcorn because Oh my God, of I just heard tampons. Really? Tampons? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wonderful, uh, shout it up. I, I think we got that covered, a JMS yeah. exclusive. <laughs> but the popcorn and the popcorn, like popcorn, yeah. Everything's so, there's a shortage of everything. Everything, cars. But you so, know what? They're always telling us there's a shortage. Also, you know. Good way, good we way to raise really, prices and make money. They're always telling us there's a shortage. <clears throat> We're oh, we live in such scarcity. I don't buy it for a second. Prices prices are I up there. Buy, I, I don't buy scarcity at all. I think we have we live in a very abundant world and there's plenty for everybody. And um don't believe the hype. So the supermarket manager sees the uh truck unloading with all of the fresh rolls of all the different brands of the toilet paper going on the shelves, and then he goes out for his one hour lunch and he comes back in. And it goes down the paper aisle and sees that everything is gone and sold out. And he says to the staff, holy cow, we got wiped out. 
That's a good one, Jim. Write that down. Use that in your routine. <laughs> so, uh, so you you have a lot of things, obviously, that you do. It's as if, you know, some people when things come to a pause, the, their world has ended. Their identity has ended. I am no longer what I was. For you, it seems like, sure, this was something that came and rose to the top of the 90s. You're still doing music. You're still writing. You've always been you know, in. But now what's really nice is you're doing it the way you want to do it on, yeah. you know, under your terms. But you've done okay. You know what I mean? You didn't fall off a cliff. You didn't. You have a family, a child, a nice house. You're still in the game. You're there. Yeah. yeah, you've got your health. So, and you've had this extraordinary experience early at an early age in your life in the twenties, where you know here you are on the top of the charts, and you're okay. You know that it goes like that, and then it goes down, and then it sort of levels out, and now you're bringing it back. You know what I mean? Like you're yeah. you. Other things filled your cup and filled your life. Your world didn't come to an end it, when the chart it, topping stuff wasn't didn't, chart topping. And you know what? Every like, like I said before, like I, I'm, life is an adventure, right? For me, it's this adventure after adventure after adventure, and and what you can learn, how you can grow, um, all of that stuff. I think is really important. So for me, the the takeaway from that experience, and I'm so grateful. I'm always so grateful. Um, and that experience, very grateful for that experience. Um, but one of the most valuable takeaways for me was that, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, I suffered with depression, ADHD, all this kind of stuff, right? And I thought. Once my dreams came true, then I would be happy, right? So it was shocking when my dreams came true and I discovered, oh, your dream, your this outside stuff is not going to make you happy. So to learn that at an early age, to learn and understand that happiness is a choice and happiness comes from within and it is not due to any external circumstances, I think has served me very well in my life to have learned that lesson at, at an early age. I think some people who don't get to have that experience or maybe their dream doesn't come true and they think, oh, but if my dream had only come true, then I would be happy. You, you wouldn't have been. No, you wouldn't have been. The dream coming true will not make you happy. You, only you will make you happy. You choose to be happy. And that's the truth. Are you still there? Jim? Hello? <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to vamp for a while because I don't know what happened to Jim. Are you guys still out there? I don't see any um, chats or anything either, but it says we're live. So I think we are. So, um... So I can't ask you guys questions because um, I can't see any answers. Um, so I'm going to tell you about this new album. So this new album, which is really an old album for me, but these songs are great songs. If you love 90s music, if you loved the album I did before, um, I think you're going to really love this album. Um, like I said, it's been... 30 years and I'm still, um, I still really like these songs. They're good songs. And, um, so I hope that you'll like it and, um, and I hope you'll like being able to listen to peace of my heart again, the like version you guys love. I'm excited about getting that out to you. I wish I could talk to somebody. Um, I don't know what happened to Jim. Hi, Jim. 
Hey. Y'all, it is really hot here. Like, really, really hot. I'm sweating so much. I don't know if you could tell that I'm sweating. But my hair is like smoking wet. All here. Hey, Joe. You can talk to me. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Wait, he's coming back. <laughs> oh, no, he's left again. There he is. Hey. <laughs> I, I wanted to even the score. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Joe just called me so I can have someone to talk to. <laughs> Wasn't that strange? First, you got knocked out right? on your end, and then we got knocked out on our end. That is strange. What is going on? So did you, were you vamping? Were you entertaining? Did you I start? Was trying to did, I was, I was doing my best to vamp. I, that's what I should have had to do something a cappella. Oh, oh <laughs> that was a good idea. See? Do you want to do something a cappella after all this? Uh, what? <laughs> want to sing something acapella? Sorry, I got Joe on the other light. Hey, no, Joe. Is Joe I, watching? Are you watching? He is watching because he called me because I was saying, I wish I had someone to talk to. <laughs> I can't even see the chat. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I know who I'm talking this. to out there. No, I know a few people I'm talking to. Can you tell about the Prince story? The Prince story. No, hang on. Oh, the Prince story. He wants me to tell about the Prince story. Okay. Oh, Prince. Yeah. So the Prince story, this is Thank you story. for filling in as my host while I got <laughs> knocked to, you know, while I had to check on my lemonade stand outside. Yes. <laughs> Very important these summer days. That's fabulous. Uh, the Prince story is so you y'all know who Carmen Electra is, right? Yes. So Carmen Electra was working with Prince, and her name, her given name, is Tara. Her first name is Tara. I don't actually, do you, Joe. Do you remember what her last name is originally? No, it was, it was Tara. But Tara was her was her given first name, and um. So Prince told her she couldn't use that name because there was another artist out named Tara Kemp. I'm like, wow. oh, Prince knows my name. <laughs> Prince knows my name. Yeah. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so anyway, but and then Carmen Electra, of course, had to change her name because of me. So that's so that's that, the story that Joe was wanting. So wanting that me. was going to be the yeah, name originally. Other keep other people's lives. But you were seeing another <laughs> exclusive. God, it's been a night of exclusives. <laughs> so uh, you were mentioning uh, some of the other stuff. Wait, that wait, you, wait. Joe is see, telling me to tell Another me. great story. Joe, is there another what, story? Joe? What else? Okay. Well, he did, so your name was, but her name was Tara. And he said, we got to name something different. And then he goes, let's name you Electra for Carmen. Carmen, Carmen Electra. Electra. And, and so you thought that was flash. As we came up to name, he named her Carmen Electra because of you. And she, uh, Carmen went on, we just got to me and told the story as well. Yeah, she has told this, this story. Yeah. I've met her too. She's so pretty. Oh my God. She's got the most beautiful skin you've ever seen in your life. She looked like uh, a baby. Yeah. That's fantastic. So now Joe, uh, who was just a guest a couple of weeks ago, he's, just finished filming a movie. He's on a movie set with a lot of fantastic people as well, right? Yeah. Right, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody tuning in. They're like, where's Joe? Who's she talking to? Is she talking to her hand? Right. I'm talking to my hand. Her imaginary <laughs> friend? <laughs> Joe is phone a friend on the millionaire it's show. It's a mini series called Keeping Up with the Jonah Joneses. What what network is it on? Jo it's going to be on Lifetime. Lifetime. July, on Lifetime. July, July 8th, every single Friday for the entire week of Do, July. Starting the entire yes. week or the month of July? Uh, the entire month of July. Right. <laughs> so starting July 8th, every cool. Friday in July. Cool. Yeah. Ralph and Farrah. That's my baby daddy. That's right. You better check him out. <laughs> Vivica A. Fox. It's a Vivica. I was, I was gonna say, uh, uh, Joe and some of the cast want to come back on. We can promote the uh, series. Ooh. Yeah, love to. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 
<laughs> they whisked in and then they're whisked out. <laughs> what? What did you say? I mean, it's a it's a Billy K. Fox, Michael Parr, Ted McKinley. Oh yeah, Michael Parr, Ted Ted McKinley, which everybody remembers from Happy yeah, Days. Yeah, uh, Happy Days and sure. Married with Children. Yes, Married with Children. From Eddie and the Cruisers. Yes. <laughs> Michael Parr. Michael Parr. For a parade. Yeah, you don't even. Eddie and the Cruisers. Very cool. Oh. We are we are getting the information as it's coming live from the newsroom with Joe Finfera, our correspondent in Hollywood. <laughs> JMS correspondent. He was calling in to give me someone to talk to. <laughs> yeah. I'm Regis Philbin, and our contestant just phoned a friend. Thank you so much. Yes, right. Phone a friend. Okay, thank you, Joe. Take care, Joe. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys like my phone case? Well, let's see. Oh, wow. It's so cute. Emily in Paris, y'all. Remember? Did you see that show? Oh, yeah. I saw, yeah. I saw this phone case. Look, it's got a little strap and everything. I had to get it. That is cool. Like, that way cool. I can look like a tourist everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been traveling at all? Have you been getting back out now or still? I wish. I haven't traveled in so long. Um, so much craziness still happening. Yeah, I think our last trip to Maui, um, my stepmom lives in Maui and her husband, um, her current husband, whenever my dad passed. Um, but we're very close with them as well. So I think it was about three, no, two years ago, yeah. summer of 2019. 2019 we was the last time last trip to Maui. you went to Hawaii. Yeah. But Could I, you live there? Would you like to live there? Oh, God. Mm. Would I ever. Wouldn't yeah. everybody like to live? I'm, I'm such an island girl. I love living on Guam. I'm an ocean person myself. I love the I ocean. I love it. I love to yeah. be near the ocean. We I are here on the East Coast. Out, We're near outside. It. Anyway, yeah. just any... I like to I, I like to commune with nature. I like being outside. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like digging in the dirt. Um, but yeah. Oh my gosh. Hawaii, the Hawaiian Islands are just dreamy. Dreamy. Really I could tell myself like ending up on an island somewhere. Wouldn't that be or nice? Somewhere on a beach, a, a beach, beach ocean situation, at least, for sure. Yeah, a beach ocean situation. That could be the name of a new show instead of <laughs> instead of Jersey Shore, right. which they already did. Ocean situation going on over here. <laughs> Tara's welcome to Tara's beach ocean situation. <laughs> <laughs> the announcer that would have to say that all week. He would be like, Tara's beach ocean. What is it? Situation Ocean's ocean. Situation. So that would that mean you are. The West Coast situation. I've got a West Coast situation because <laughs> they had the situation right on the East Coast. He was in they Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a here's the West Coast situation. <laughs> Another West exclusive. Coast is good. The East Coast is good too. Got anything coastal? Do you have Pretty any um, connections coastal. to the East Coast? Family, friends, others. I do. Coast? I have friends. My manager is in New York as well. Um, one of my very close friends that I worked at. Estee Lauder with, who's a big time makeup artist now over in New York, um, lives there and yeah, several. Um, I love New York. It's been a long time. I think the last time I was in New York was that shoot, the gorgeous shoot that I did with Robbie. The one you did, yeah. Um, yeah. And oh, so I wanted to tell you guys about Robbie. So, um, so Robbie was my one of my closest friends from high school, and he is the inspiration for Peace of My Heart. So I had a mad crush on him when I was a kid. Mm. He was like my first crush, um, but he's gay. So, of course, that was never going to happen or work out romantically speaking. Um, so uh, 
So that's what Peace of My Heart is about, that, you know, that situation. He had a piece of your heart? He had a piece of my heart. And um, everybody thought there was something going on, but there was nothing, there was nothing really going on. Yeah. Just friendship, but very close friendship. Yeah, um, right. Very close um, bond with us, and we're still really close friends. So. Isn't that cool? All these years later? God, mm -hmm. how many years is that now? You think about it. Yeah, he's the will to my grace. <laughs> 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 Is there a Megan Mullally in there somewhere too? <laughs> there is, but it's a guy. Um, <laughs> he's also gay, and his name is Charlie. <laughs> Charlie is the Megan Mullally. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. So this is a life is good. I mean, we've going we've been going through crazy times, and it's I keep saying it's, it's, like, always, a, it's like it is a movie. Yeah. It is. It is like a movie, but in a way, I feel like teachable moments even though there's so much like conflict right now right there's within our own country i mean there's like so much conflict going on in the world at the same time i feel like there's also been this incredible unifier of experience that we've been going through right so yeah i think it ha having a sa the same experience with other people unifies people it brings people together so we've all been through this experience together yeah this crazy pandemic and being shut down and it's still it's not really over yet we're acting like it's over but it's not really over no there's and, the monkey thing going around and, and then the i mean <laughs> gas I, I don't know with gas what's costs, next you, termites Seven dollars a gallon over here now in California. Yes, yes, seven. I think right. Sixty-nine. So you can imagine what it is in Hawaii, oh where my everything God. is shipped in. Awful. Let's and other places that. like islands like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy stuff. But we got to stay together, you know. And uh, where, are, where are those hydroponic cars? I'm, I'm ready for my hydroponic. Car. <laughs> I want that. I want that. And I want that free wireless energy. That would be good, huh? I want that. What do you, you know, guys like? I, I, <laughs> I want to know what they want. What do you guys yeah, want? What, what would you like, Lovities? Post oh, in the Lovities, JMS. Lovities, tell me what uh, you want. Lovities, you tell want? us what, 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 what new, are you wanting right now? What are you hoping out of life right now? What advancements are you looking for to help us in our That's struggle right. to be free? With everything that we've been through the last two, three years. Everything. Uh, nationally and internationally, what are you hoping for? Um, post in our comments section right now. Um, it, you know, it's it's proof to Mother Earth that we are both resilient and uh, we don't give in or give up, and we are professionals because you got knocked off the air and found your way back in. I got knocked off the air and found my way back in. Some people would be, that's it. They're, they're oh, well, done. I guess, they're done. I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, so we have a, a saying in our family about being in the solution, right? Being in the solution. I like that. Tell the us solution. about that. Yeah. So being in the solution means not being in the problem. Don't dwell in the problem. Focus on the solution. Be in the solution. So that's our. So you grabbed our a fan, mm -hmm. <laughs> plugged it in. Yeah. yeah. So I have a fan sitting here, which you can hear probably. It's not very yeah. pretty, but it's yeah. working in my. It's, um, it's cool, right? Now. It's not totally cool, actually. It, uh, is it cooling you too a little bit? It's cooling me a little bit too. I could turn yeah. it towards me a little bit more, actually. Ah, there's the wind blown sort the wind, of the wind, the wind chamber. Yeah, she's in a SD Lauder <laughs> commercial right now. <laughs> right, Paulina, Paulina Poroskova. She was the model when I was working with SD Lauder. That's right. And right. I see her a lot on uh, social media now. Is she still Is she modeling, or? I think she does, but she's really promoting. Um, graceful natural aging which is nice which is nice um 
I mean, I don't know if I'm promoting that. I just haven't done anything yet. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Um, yeah. You know, when you look back at it all, and again, congratulations on all the new things and exciting things that are happening and the wonderful things in your life. Um, what would you say to her now, having lived through the different experiences, what would you say to that earlier version of Tara Kemp? I would tell her not to take herself so seriously and yeah. let go a little bit. Yeah. And also to celebrate every win when it happens. You know, I think a lot of times we would reach a milestone and it was immediately on to whatever the next goal was <clears throat> instead of really celebrating those milestones. Yeah. And I think it's really important to celebrate your successes. I don't think we do it enough. And I think that everybody, I don't think I'm unique in, in that I feel like, um, you know, I'm probably harder on myself than anybody else is. I think most people are, most people are, mo are very critical of themselves, highly critical mm -hmm. of themselves. Yes. Um, expect a lot out of themselves. I think, Demand a lot, I think yeah. it's like, a, it's human nature. I think we're all kind of like that, you know? Yes. Yep. So, um, I think it's really, and, and the music industry, unfortunately they know that and they really play into that psychology they really do a number on trying to make you feel like you're not worthy, that you're really not successful because you haven't broken even yet. After all, out of the two cents you get per record to pay them back hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know? So, um, so they're always basically telling you you're a failure, you know? So I think I would I would celebrate my successes. I would um, tell my I would tell myself to celebrate my successes and to not take myself so seriously, and just have fun. Just just have fun. That's the way to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the way to do it. That's it's uh, yeah, because when we're all starting out, it's you're trying to please and think that you have to follow exactly what's being presented in front of you and uh yeah and yeah. i was very naive jim i mean i i grew up with you know watching mgm musicals and oh yeah were you whole, um turned yeah. on by the glamour of hollywood oh, yeah. and so yeah. much so yeah. much so much yeah. you know yeah. julie garland and and, Who is, this um, is the, her hundredth birthday this week. Oh wow! She would be one hundred. Right. So Jimmy, I, mean, I think like I, today, I, or I, she and Mickey Rooney and their whole like, let's put a show together. Let's go do that. that that's how I felt about getting with the record label. I was like, yay! I felt like Mickey Rooney and um, Judy Garland. Like, oh my god, we're gonna put a show together, and we're all in this together, right? And what's good for me is good for you, and what's good for you is good for me. That is not true. That is just naive. It, does, it doesn't work so that way. Yeah. So I was so naive. Thinking everybody loves everybody and it's all a team I still and do. It's for the I good still, of the whole thing. I still, and I still expect people. So to do me. I. I Have you had to lower your expectations over the I years? I never do. I always expect the best out of people. And, and when um, you don't you know, get it. I know it. people who say, I, I expect the worst from, from people. And so I'm they never start the opposite. That's right. their there yeah the reverse psychology it's like i'd rather expect the best sorry my hair's everywhere it's kind of cool you're doing that beach <laughs> ocean situation wind uh, blowing. Yeah, I need that beach <laughs> situation going on um uh you yeah, don't we, uh you don't lower your expectations I, i'm not going to stuff. i'm not gonna i think i'm very committed to being myself and I'm very committed to not, I mean, I'm not saying not grow, but not changing the essence of my being. And the essence of my being believes that most people are good. Mm -hmm. Most people are. Yeah. Most people, you know, 
love their children. Most people love their parents. Most people want their loved ones, their friends and family to be well, to be safe. Um, I think those are things that are, are part of human nature. So I expect the best of people. Yeah. And I am disappointed sometimes. And that's okay. Because if somebody shows me that they're not that kind of person, then they get extracted from my life quickly. I do not, I do not keep people around who are negative, who are dishonest. Um, they don't stay in Would my that life. that take time to learn how to create those boundaries and allow yourself to snip, snip? I know it's taken me a long time to do it and, and, I've mentioned it was uh, it was a a drive alone through Death Valley in a 120 degree heat in August after a TV shoot in uh, Pahrump, Nevada, and I had this rental car and I just went in and doing that alone with the risk and the heat and uh, nobody knowing who was doing it. That I came out of that with those. I got to create boundaries. I can't keep saving the world, and I can't keep always yeah. running and jumping and feeling guilty if I'm not sharing it with the whole world and all the rest. Right. And uh, it was one of the greatest things. But it that didn't happen when I was 18. It came down the pike no. to realize that. When did you realize you had to create boundaries and you had to? Uh, you know, if, if it's toxic, if it's uh, negative, if they're dragging you down and sucking I'm you still dry. Hard. To be honest, I'm still, still I still struggle with it. It's because you're hard compassionate um, and you're good hearted. I'm getting, I mean, I think that probably having my kid made me a lot more self protective than I had been prior to that. Um, so I think things changed around that time. But, um, but I'm an empathic person and it's, it's, um, you know, I, and, and I feel, I, like I said, I, I really look for the best in people, even if they don't always display the best, I see the best in them. Do you know what I mean? Like I yeah, see, yeah. I see that the essence yeah, of yeah. their being, I see the, the goodness in people. I see that. And yeah, people don't yeah. always choose to be that. They don't always choose to be their authentic self. A lot of people choose negativity. A lot of people feel like, well, I have to lie in order to get to manipulate the situation or whatever, right? Um, I'm not like that. And it's not, not always a good thing, to be honest. A lot of people do not like you to be honest. They don't really... People say they want honesty, but a lot of people don't really want it. That has been my experience. Because I'm very, I'm very, uh, I guess, just abrupt about the way I say things. I don't know if I'm like super um, good at sugarcoating anything, right? I'm pretty like straightforward, straight to the point. Like You really had to wear that blue outfit? I hate right? that blue outfit. <laughs> Try not to be really negative, but um, but I will be honest, and um, you know, and it, it definitely didn't go over well in the music business because, it's, and especially for a young woman in her twenties, like you are not allowed to have an opinion. Basically, you're not allowed to have an opinion. How dare you have an opinion and talk about it? The audacity of actually talking about the opinion you have. And did you find that even more so being a female? Of, of course. Like you couldn't even. 100%. You just go out there and sing and that's it. Yeah. Sing, show us your tits, you know, shake your ass, whatever. Although they didn't really like my ass. They weren't, they weren't happy because, you know, the waif look was, was what was popular back then. And I'm, I'm not that. I'm a very, you know, curvy girl. So um, I was fat. I was, uh, let's, um, let's have you stand with your legs crossed so that you're, you look narrower. So they would yeah. actually say those things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and for a young woman to hear that, it can be very 
detrimental to her psyche. Yeah. I mean, and, and it doesn't, you know, and honestly, most artists are not the most secure people. Right. They're not. I mean, what are we doing this for? We want, we want to connect. We want to, you know, we want more love in our life. We're just looking for more love, right? <laughs> looking for love in all the wrong places. And we're we'll trying to give it too, because we know everybody else also wants a little more love in their life, right? We all want a little more love. So, um, yeah, it's it's tough. Navigating the, the business is tough. I learned a lot and I, you know, I'm very grateful for the experiences and even the the bad experiences. I don't know if any of you saw JLo's acceptance speech the other night at the um, MTV Movie and TV Awards. Did anybody see that? If you haven't, check out her acceptance, acceptance speech. Yeah. Really phenomenal speech. And she talked about, um, you know, being grateful for every experience and the people that supported her and, and the people who didn't. Because those people that don't, they light a fire under your ass. And it's not just people outside your family. My dad told me, you're never going to make it in this business. Did you, you see know, one that? In as... a million, one in a million makes it in this business. Did no, Did he, you think he was doing that to protect you so you're not hurt and disappointed? Or was he doing that to challenge you to give you the gusto to go out and get it and did you see that as a challenge well i'm going to prove him wrong and show him how i saw it as a challenge and to prove him wrong yeah so it was a motivator for me i don't think that was his intention at all um like i said i was into acting i wanted to go to northwestern um for college and my dad was like, i'm not paying for you to get that type of degree so i ended up not going to college i mean i took mm. some college but i didn't you know get I didn't pursue a degree or anything like that. If you didn't go into music, what was the other thing that you enjoyed or still enjoy? If I weren't, if it weren't performance oriented, um, design. You like design. Yeah. I like design. Yeah. Um, fashion I or everything, but well, yes, yeah, I've done fashion design. I've done costume design. I've done interior design, set design. Um, product design is kind of like a like my secret fantasy of profession like to be a product designer would be super fun i think mm, that's cool huh <clears throat> like household items and stuff like that um Even right like now gadgets that make life easier gadgets, and... and i love gadgets yes oh, like, you should have worked with Eat ron Peel. that are functional <laughs> like right now i'm having a really good time because i'm working on the artwork for this project and um and i'm working with a couple of my son's friends that are phenomenal young artists um but just sitting there with the graph paper and drawing things up and coming up with logos and different designs and we we i think you guys are gonna really like some of these designs i think you're gonna really like it um these are like, things that you're working on that we're gonna be that seeing you, soon that you will be seeing soon Good. yep Cool. Like, uh, I wonder if I could show it on my phone. Can I show it on? Will it show up on my phone? If I show you a picture, real probably, quick? yeah. If you put it towards the camera, sure. Let's see. Absolutely. So we we came up with this part for hold you tight, right? Absolutely. There it is. That's a heart. You see it? That's the hold you tight heart, but hang on. There's more, but wait. But wait, <laughs> but there's wait. more. <laughs> kind of like Ron Propel, Ronco. Oh, there's more. There's more. If, if you call it. now, you can get right. two and shipping is free <laughs> in the next 10 minutes. So I wanted to do one for, for the United States. We've got 4th of July is coming up. And we've got voting season coming up and everybody is so divided. And so I wanted to hold you tight for the USA. So this is my hold you tight USA image. That's really That's nice. Cute. So the, the you red. You could design your own cover albums. Right. For album covers. <laughs> cover albums. Album, <laughs> <laughs> album covers. 
It's fun. It's so much fun. I think I'm it's getting having, hot in here. <laughs> having so much fun doing that stuff. So yeah, see, it's another outlet. Yeah. It's another outlet. You of like creation. to cook? That's the one thing I'm not really. I don't really. It, I'm not passionate about it. I do cook. I mean, I I make my dog's food. My dog's the only one I cook for right now because my mom's not living here right now. Right. So, and I don't cook for my son anymore, really, uh, just occasionally. But um, the only one I cook for is my dog. And I cook his food. I make his food. <laughs> what do you have tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Filet mignon. And <laughs> no, we may, I just have a dip. I make, it's chicken and sweet potatoes. Chicken and sweet potatoes. That sounds pretty good. It is oh good. That's a good. He's a happy Do you guy. have a specialty? I mean, is there, if Cooking there wise, would be one thing? I have a small repertoire. Or, I think the best, the best thing that I make, and you guys are going to laugh because it has such a bad reputation, but I make Hot dogs? <laughs> meatloaf on the planet. What? Oh, I I'm love meatloaf. I, I love make meatloaf. Best. My meatloaf is the best meatloaf. Now, I didn't come up with it. It is a family recipe. I love meatloaf. I but make it, meatloaf all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And meatloaf I love sandwiches. Now, do you do different things? You doctor it? You don't just do meat and ketchup or whatever. You turn it into... Well, the meatloaf is has, you know, onions, bell peppers, right? Um, bread and eggs and milk. And salt and pepper and beef broth. Those are the ingredients of the meat. Beef meatloaf. broth. Ah. Yes. Now, here's the key with my meatloaf. I do not put it in a loaf pan. Do you make yours in a loaf pan? You know, generally, yeah, to shape it, it for the shaping, right? Right. So I don't, I don't do that. Instead, and I make enough for two loaves because we like meatloaf sandwiches afterwards. They're really good, guys. Like, you have no idea how good they are. So, but we put them on a lips um, cookie sheet, right? Two loaves. You just shape them into little loaves. Two loaves on the cookie sheet. You cook it. Take your loaves off, and there's all those drippings on the pan. Those drippings are the base for your gravy. And it's good. It's so good. Yeah. Good. Good enough to write a song about? No. <laughs> See, now, if Meatloaf hadn't <laughs> taken that name. <laughs> you know, I love me some Meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> you could do yeah, a lot with Meatloaf. <laughs> meatloaf is good. Meatloaf yeah, is it's, good. well, I love comfort food, mashed potatoes. Comfort food is great. Mm -hmm. What's comfort your specialty? Well, I was going to say meatloaf is one of them. Yeah, meatloaf has always been one of them. And then uh, in the breakfast side of things, scrambled eggs too. Scrambled eggs. I'll always, Ooh. and they'll be different each time. I like to play and experiment and doctor them with different flavors and different oh, things. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. My that, favorite game with like leftovers is will it scramble in the morning? Right. right. Will it scramble? Right. Chinese food is great for scrambled eggs, right? Chinese food is great for it too. Exactly. Food, get your chilaquillas going, you know. But even potato, really mashed potato, leftover that like you fry it up, and yeah, I know. Have My you eaten? Favorite. I hope you ate already. <laughs> I ate earlier. Yes, I ate before Good. before we started. <laughs> yeah. you've, wa you've watched before, yeah. Yeah. Yes. You, you know, so, I asked uh, this question of uh, Melissa. I'd love to ask you too. What are some of the things that inspire you? Going back to the musical side of things, um, how are you inspired to write? Are you an observer of life? I mean, obviously, it sounds like you're observing life. You're soaking it all up. What are yeah. some of the things that inspire you? Because you probably remember when Melissa was on, she was saying that uh, sometimes the inspiration will come out of anywhere, thin air, and she has to run to the piano, run to the recorder, plus record, and just start working it out on the piano. Whatever is filtering through her, she's got to capture it then and then work with it and toy with it later, but capture whatever the inspiration is, then record it, 
play it mm-hmm. out so it doesn't dissipate, weaken, or dissolve. How about mm-hmm. you? What inspires you? And when you are inspired, do you try to capture the moment and the feeling and the energy as it's happening? Mm-hmm. Different. I'm inspired different at different times by different things. Sometimes um, you'll just have a concept or an idea. Or you'll, I'll have a concept or an idea for a song, and um, and it starts from there. Sometimes, most of the time, um, I get melodies just start coming, playing in my head. I just get melodies. And it starts from the melody and then the lyrics develop after that. I don't always write stuff down immediately, although I do tend to try to, like if I have a melody that I like, I'll write some type of nonsense lyric because I can remember the lyric easily and that will remind me of the melody. Um, but it's all, it's different at, different at different times. I've had the experience where I've had just like basically a download of a song where it just the whole song came at once. I could not keep up fast enough to even write it down. Like it was just coming so fast. Um, but those don't happen all the time. Um, and I tend to like to, um, I, I feel like if it's a good one, it'll keep coming back to me. And, um, so I tend to, to wait for those, those melodies that keep popping back up, right? Instead of running and writing it down as soon as I think of it. So does, does it, some of it come back? Does it circle back to you so, sometimes? Yeah, it comes back. they come back. The good, they, they do. They do come back. Those melody lines come back. So do you have a lot of uh, music that's sitting like in a drawer that hasn't been released hasn't been like i was saying melissa is now just releasing music from 1977 that has never been released I which is very that exciting that. that's so great that isn't that fantastic her live 77 album which we'll talk about on sunday so do you have a drawer great. filled with music that hasn't we haven't heard or seen there yet is, yeah there is a lot of music that hasn't been heard but not some not music that does, is ready, like record ready. You know, I have material, but I don't have records that's recorded. Like what you're saying, Melissa has her thing from the 70s. I'm putting this one out from the 90s. It was all written and recorded at that time. I'm not really updating it. I'm cleaning it up. I'm letting it be what it is. Um, but I do have catalog of kind of different spurts of writing from different periods of my life. Like I, I basically, you just kind of go through phases. I mean, it's the same thing like with your wardrobe or anything else that you do, you know, you have like a certain style that you're really into for right now. And then as you grow or you have experiences, then you have different influences and then you like, Oh, I'm going to change it up. I must start doing it like this, you know? Um, but um, so there's some, I, I, have they i've had like groups of songs that are phases of writing right it's kind of like if you're a painter i mean not like i'm comparing myself to to picasso but you know like he had the blue period and he had the you know there's different periods of his life that you can see oh this is from this period of his life this is from this period of his life this is from so i have that kind of stuff like i've groups of songs that I wrote at a certain, like I have a group of songs that I wrote after my dad passed away. And I was like, I went through a period of time where I had done a lot of scheduled writing sessions and well, on-demand writing. And I had decided then after my dad passed away and I, you know, the whole music thing was over, that I was going to just write only from inspiration and not, not anything deliberate, no deliberate writing, only inspiration only. And that's when I got that download of that song that all came at once from mm. inspiration. So that was a really fun experiment. Um, I think as an artist, it's really good to try different things and experiment. Um, lately, I've been writing jazz swing songs. 
So, um, and you're like jazz. Oh, I love jazz. Yeah. 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 I love jazz. Me too. I love, my go-to music is bossa nova. I play mm, bossa nova. Everybody yes. calls it elevator music. It's like, oh my gosh, she likes the elevator music. I, yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> Actually, I love all that. I have tons of that stuff. I love bossa I've nova. Got, it's yeah, just bossa so nova. Like, I even have Henry Mancini. I mean, I have oh, everything. Oh, I love it. Right? That's the good stuff. I you know, the Tijuana brass. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, all that stuff that's, is good. That's the stuff that soothes the soul, and what do they say? Soothes the savage beast, or what have you. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I think maybe we should start piping some of that back in and maybe people's stress levels will go down you know, they won't be uh fighting in supermarkets anymore for the the music is sort of easier not so, and not so more angry. softer <laughs> right and angry and <laughs> there's a lot of angry music out there there's a lot of angry music out there, there and is. uh and some of it is not even instruments it's just you know sounds and uh True. Yeah, so when you have uh, that stuff that uh, makes you feel a little bit better and lowers the temperature, I really think, I really do think that, you know, I'm an atmospheric type person anyway. So I yeah. think when you do hear pleasant things around you, even if it's not consciously, it's just there, I think it makes a difference. I really yeah. think, you know. It, it Scientifically, it makes a difference because music right. can actually change the cells in your body. Right. I mean, if you were going to walk through. By, it's vibration. All if, vibrational. It's all vibration. Right. If you were going to walk through a botanical garden on one day and a junkyard on the next, which one's going to make you feel better? <laughs> Although these yeah. days, parts for cars are very, very know. scarce. I mean, so probably the junkyard would probably I be could, very. You know, I've been known to dumpster dive, so I, I could I could probably do it. You a could do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, was it was it the three dog night song? Junkyard dog. Dun 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 dun. dun, 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 dun. Yeah, what was that? What was that name of that song? Dun dun dun, dun a junkyard dog. Dun 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 dun. dun. It's a three dog night song, that's for sure. It goes back even earlier. Vaguely oh, remember. Me and somebody. Yeah, I think it's one of those songs, me and somebody else. Bobby McGee. So, something <laughs> like <laughs> somebody else will will get it, I'm sure, here. Somebody else they will. will. They'll tell us who, what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have a preference stage over studio? Hmm. Um that's a really good question. No, um, I don't think so. I have more access to studio than I do to stage. So Steve answered the question. Bad, bad Leroy, Leroy Brown. <laughs> da, da, da. There it is. From, uh, that was late. Jim Jim Croce. Croce. Yes. Meaner than a junkyard dog. Thank Meaner you, than Steve. a junkyard dog. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Steve wins the prize. Steve, you get a year's fly. supply. Since we're talking Northern California, Steve, we're going to keep it thematic. You'll get a year's supply of rice -roni, the San Francisco treat. <laughs> the San Francisco treat. <laughs> so you're nice. saying stage and studio? Um, stage and studio. I, they're both great. They're both really different. Um, this, like I said, the studio is more accessible. So that's where you're going to find me mostly. But um, I love to perform and I haven't been performing as much as I would like. So I'm really looking forward to that aspect of this um, new adventure that I'm going on and um, getting to, to be on stage more and connecting with my, the audience live and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. You know, there's just nothing like the live, like the yeah, live yeah. interaction and, and, and that stuff. I, I like love, I said, I, love, I love. really, this whole experience with the studio has been a lot of fun and um, just dissecting this material and trying to get it, bring it up to an acceptable level of fidelity, removing, I mean, the equipment that they have now, studio equipment. Yeah. We could, we were able to pull Incredible. samples out. And um, there's this one song um, called Erotic, which I will talk about later on, not today, 
but later on. <laughs> Join us next week out. at the same time for part two. <laughs> so the record's out, so you guys tells us about erotic, and then she tells us about how she makes her eggs Benedict. <laughs> it's, it's been, oh no, but oh, I do have a. I, I can tell you about my eggs Benedict. And are those two combined? The eggs Benedict <laughs> no, and the erotic. No. <laughs> she calls them the erotic eggs Benedict. Erotic e -E -E eggs. for short. Right. <laughs> I do have it. I currently am loving eggs Benedict, and I'm going to tell you that recipe too in a minute. Um, but it's, it's not the normal one. Um, <laughs> So where were we before the eggs Benedict? Now I'm thinking about my eggs Benedict thing back there <laughs> right now. As you're uh, there in your beach <laughs> ocean scenario. <laughs> yeah, beach ocean. Uh, you you were still talking about studio talking about and stage. Studio mm -hmm. and um. Yeah, I, I oh the sample. So that song yes. had a James Brown sample in it. So uh, James Brown is very expensive, y'all. Like you have to pay. Twenty thousand dollars up front for James Brown sample. Um, really? And as you know, like most he had his trumpet player is there, like Tolly Farris, who's oh, been with her for years. He was a guest on the show. Was it like last year? And he told some extraordinary uh, James oh, Brown stories. I, I think he was performing in he Georgia or somewhere. Stories to tell. The trumpet oh. player Holly Holly Farris, really talented, still plays. He's still in the James Brown band. Wow. They still tour. He, oh, wow. uh, yeah, they still tour. They still perform. And he was talking about how he was gigging. Um, I don't know. Maybe he was in his early twenties, late teens, or whatever. And he was in Georgia, or wherever, Atlanta, or something. And James Brown happened to come into the club and heard him and said, hey, "I want him," and plucked him out and brought him into the wow. band Holly Farris. Fabulous, and he's been with wow. the James Brown band ever since. Yeah, and so that's decades. all you know, live musicianship, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, and um, you know, About twenty thousand a clip, huh? I mean, yeah, hip hop music. Most of that, all the sampling and stuff, most of it is James Brown. The yeah. basis of most of it is funk James music, Brown, right? or sometimes you'll hear some disco. Uh, I think I heard the Andrea True Connection more, more, more. How do you like it? How do you like it? And mm -hmm. a commercial or Casey's and the Sunshine Band. You've heard mm -hmm. clips of that in TV commercials today. Stuff right. from the 70s, 80s. So there was this, um, there was a sample, a James Brown sample. Um, and so we pulled, we were able to pull it out and I re-recorded it myself. So that was really fun and getting yeah. to like, play with my voice. I, the samples on um, the Lynn Collins samples, uh, both on Hold You Tight and Peace of My Heart, I also cut this time myself. Um, I had an argument that with them back in the day. I was like, why are you putting somebody else's voice on my record? Like, it's a sample. Yeah. Like, yeah, but it's a singer that I could sing that. I don't need somebody else to sing that part. If that's the part you want, I could sing that part. Yeah. You don't understand, Tara. That's not the, that's not the point. You don't you don't understand the whole concept of the sample, right? So, but I did understand the concept of but you paying somebody else for that. You know, I understand the concept of making money very well, and how to make money and how not to make money. And if you can do it yourself, in the way I feel about it, I may as well do it myself and get me paid. Rather than using a sound, and I know this is controversial for those people that are those audiophiles out there and hip hop fans that love sampling and really devoted to sampling. And I do get it. I do understand that you are um, hearkening back to a previous time and paying homage to that time. But those people, those artists that you're paying homage to are not getting that money. The late now James Brown people they are getting that money because he they own all their publishing now after 35 years it reverts back to the artist but for a lot of people they're not getting that money those are sound recordings that is going to the labels who exploited those artists that you love so all you're doing is putting more pot more money into the pockets of the major labels who don't care about you and did not care about these artists that you care about, you know? So I say, 
pay homage by re-recording it. Mm. People will know those parts. People will know the, the reference. If they're in the know, they're going to know mm -hmm. whether you're using a sample or you're re-recording it. Mm. And it's fun to re-record stuff and make your voice sound different, like different things, you know? Right, right, exactly. You know, you hear some of that with the child stars too, how they were treated and dealt with. Here they are on these epic television shows and series and movies. Yeah. But it didn't always, whether the manager or the parent or the studio or whatever sort of milked the situation. Yeah. And I think it's actor Paul Peterson that created from the Donna Reed show that created this organization that uh, oversees everything for the child stars to make sure they get what they were supposed to get. Because right. a lot of them really never did. There was no residuals and all of that for some of the most iconic shows we all love. A lot of those folks aren't making anything on it. All yeah. they make all they make now are the autograph signings and the comic con shows and right. you know t-shirts and things that are around the show and the character but not from the show itself see that's really sad like they're not getting residuals for those shows and i know i i know child actors um who are on really big shows that that i like you're saying don't get residuals off those shows nothing yeah. and you know they have no control over that whatever contract was signed for them and they are the ones that did the work and they should get paid you know yeah. but it's it's great i mean the, the the industry is continuing to grow and evolve some aspects of the industry more slowly than others you know um but like in the music industry when my song, when Hold You Tight was out, we didn't have sound exchange. Mm. Okay, sound exchange for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a service that monitors um, records that are being played, and they give you royalties for they give you performance royalties. Okay, right. so like BMI and ASCAP, ASCAP, they are giving you songwriting royalties. There was never a performance royalty before. So for instance, Whitney Houston, uh, who sang I Will Always Love You, written by Dolly Parton, okay? So she made money off the sales of that record. She did not make any money for all the airplay that it received, okay? The songwriter, Dolly Parton, made that money. There were no performance royalties at that time, just like when Hold You Tight was out and got tons of radio play. I did not get paid anything for all that radio play because there was not performance royalties at that time. And sound exchange does, didn't, does, is not retroactive to that time either. So that is a big improvement, I think, that we have sound exchange now and people get performance royalties that they, they didn't get before. I think that's a big deal. Um, and it's really good for a lot of these young artists too that are doing covers. Because mm. you, know, you can still get performance royalties. And I've made more money since Sound Exchange started than I made off the mu off the music. Maybe not off live performances, but off the music. The the whole time before that mm. so yeah thank god for sound exchange that's a big deal that's been that's yeah that's it's been a, big deal. a blessing in many ways what, what are some of the other blessings and joys in your life tara that keep you motivated and keep you wanting to create for all of us <laughs> um you know what i don't know exactly where the drive comes from that urge to create it's just kind of, I don't know, I guess it's part of my nature. Um, I am really inspired by young artists as well. My son is a great source of inspiration for me um, because he's also very creative. And, um, and my friends and family 
are very creative and supportive. Um, but it's most of it is just, I just like, I can't help myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can't quit you. So I, <laughs> I ain't going away, people. I can't quit you. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't. It's just, it's like, I used it's to tell you people, are. Yeah, I used to tell people, and they, they would talk about, you know, choosing to be an artist and stuff like that. It's like, okay, well, it's not exactly a choice. It's more of like it's in your d blood, your DNA. It's, it's who you are. It's, you know, it's, you I don't want to do it. Yeah, I would use the word affliction, but it sounds very negative. <laughs> it's not maybe no. so negative as an affliction, but affliction, it's like obsession. <laughs> you have to. It's like passion. for me, it's passion, for me, it's passion. like like I said. Okay, so I struggle with. Um, I struggle with depression. I str struggle with ADHD. I struggle with um, social anxiety. Um, and you don't live in DC? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So um, the the creativity is a way for me to is is a is therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. It's a way for me, and like music for me especially. Um, if I'm feeling bad, all I need to do is put on some music and sing the for music a while. Does it. Yeah, and the is, singing, yeah. like the vibration in my body mm -hmm. of the tones and stuff and the music, and it just, it yes. changed everything. And even Doesn't if it's it? not a pause, like, let's say, like, like I'm saying when I was a, a kid and you're going through difficult stuff, it's like, I'm going to sing a really sad song because I feel really sad right now. And I need to get that emotion out of me. And it's the same thing with songwriting. So the songwriting is kind of like whatever you're going through, whatever's happening, it's just like a way of releasing it. Instead of writing, you know, keeping a journal, I write music. Mm. And that's kind of mm -hmm. my journal. That's, that's right. my journal. You know, same thing. Very with healing, the very therapeutic. Yeah. Very therapeutic. Yeah. It's therapeutic. I see, I keep telling people I don't smoke, but music is my cigarette. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. It's like, you know, it's like, like that one. yeah, it's like, like right you there. have a single dimple too. Huh? You have a one, you're a one dimple guy. No, I oh, think no, there's two. You do have two. two. One is a little bit stronger than the other one. That one. <laughs> you have two. I only you, got, you got good eyesight. That's, no that's one. a master's trait. My father, it's, that's all been passed down. You have oh, yeah. one? Yeah. I have one. My dad had one too. Same place on the other other side, and both of us got it from childhood accidents. A dimple. A dimple. Yeah, I fell off a ladder when I was like three years old, and landed on. And I landed side. on um, like I'm out. My mirror image is like off with this thing. <laughs> like I, I don't know which side is which, but um, I landed on a. Um, a tea box, which is a wooden box with metal corners. And I landed on the right here and it just like. Mm. Gave you a dimple. Started. It swelled up really big. And my dad was like, oh, you're going to have a dimple. And then he told me about how he got his dimple from. An accident as well. Yeah. A swing a kid on a swing, swinging into him when he was a kid. Same thing. Mm swelled up and then he had a dimple. See? There's worse things you could have other than a dimple. It's not bad. I mean, as far as like, yeah, is, I do yeah. feel like I'm very blessed. I mean, who else falls off? I mean, even the word it's itself like, sounds cool, dimple. doesn't like, it? <laughs> what? And even the word itself sounds like it's a good thing. A dimple. Yeah. You know, it dimple. sounds like it's cute. A dimple. I have a dimple. Yeah. <laughs> you look on your thighs and you know, nobody thinks that's cute. I mean, it's far better. It's a far better word than wart. <laughs> it's a better word than wart. But you look don't want to have it. multiple. You don't want to. You want. Oh, look at um, Mr. George, George Burns, Burns. Always likes to pop in. I love him. This wind and Gracie Allen too. Gracie Allen was great. 
this they, inside the house beach ocean situation you have going on is cool. Somebody just tuning in right now, they're probably saying, Does that lady have a window open? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too hot outside. The neighbors who are watching across the street are probably saying, It's 90 degrees. There isn't a single breeze. How's she getting the breeze inside her house? <laughs> My Honeywell fan. <laughs> you, you you actually have right there's somebody on the other side of the camera that's been like fanning you for <laughs> manually uh he's here with a cigar and his pocket square and he always pops in towards the latter part to say hello and uh, he said you knocked it out of the park you were amazing he loved all the stories and he thoroughly enjoyed Thanks, George. the I conversation Isn't that cool <laughs> My aunt collected dolls, and uh, when he turned 100, she had to make sure she got the collectible, so it got passed down That's to me. So and we work him into the show towards the latter part. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a George Burns fan and Gracie Allen. Yeah. I love them. All those shows, absolutely, yeah. This was fantastic. I can't believe we said we were going to chat for an hour. Do you know we almost chatted for three? Oh, my God, you're kidding. Well, we were you know? down. Part of the time. Part of the time we were just chatting by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I was lucky. I had visuals to go to. Coming up tomorrow, coming right. up Sunday, coming, I knew you had to phone a friend like phone you're, on, friend. The oh, you're God, on the millionaire Joe's show. He's like, I'll call. You can talk to me. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Joe to the rescue. Absolutely. Yeah. This was really, really fantastic. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, you're welcome yeah. back. Of course, we don't have to chat this long next time, but this is just nice. People got a chance to see you. They got that burning question answered. Whatever happened to Tara Kemp? Here she is in the flesh, healthy, happy, thriving. content. Coming out with new music soon. <laughs> Looks and feels like a million bucks. New music on the way. Uh, updated versions of some of the favorites and you know uh, a mom and just she gave you her meatloaf recipe what more could you expect oh, wait. We didn't oh have you have the uh, the eggs benedict eggs benedict okay i'm gonna give you this is, i'm leaving you with this eggs benedict it's another okay. exclusive the eggs benedict i'm not gonna recipe. give you a recipe i'm just gonna tell you so i actually had this at a restaurant and then i had to recreate it at home it, it involves avocados Okay, so it's, see, it's all it's, full circle. The avocados that have been in the bag that ripened, and in, in ripen in the bag, and then put it in the cold water in the jar in the fridge. Don't forget. So when <laughs> then take it out when you're ready to make this eggs Benedict. You so your English muffin on the bottom, right? Okay, and then you can either put. I, I like to put the avocado onto the toast first. And then smoked salmon, mm. your poached egg, and microgreens, hollandaise, actually hollandaise sauce, microgreens on top. Mm. Yummy. If you like smoked salmon, if you like avocado, if you like eggs benedict, you are going to love it. So the so salmon good. and the avocado and the microgreens balance out the hollandaise sauce, right? So yeah. good. That sounds good. It's so good, Jim. You should try it. Do you like smoked salmon? Do There's like something salmon? about the Some way you're saying like, how do good I, it do is. I seem like it's evil. And with the wind <laughs> blowing and everything, it's so good. It's, it's like <laughs> if you're just tuning in now. <laughs> if my mother and your mother were just tuning in right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are they talking about? <laughs> What's going on? Eggs Benedict. It's eggs eggs Benedict, Benedict, moms. Her mom and my mom. It's Eggs Benedict. <laughs> eggs Benedict. <laughs> That's funny. That's cool. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I hope the show met whatever I expectations did. you had. I had a blast. I did, too. It was so fun chatting with you. And Trying reminiscing, I just feel like we talked yeah. a lot about, like, you know, you probably grew up at the same time, the same era as I did. You know. A lot of different directions we went in too, you mm -hmm. know, and that's what I like. I tell people it's, um, we don't put a clock on it. If you're here for 20 minutes, you're here for an hour, whatever, that's fine. We'll always have a good conversation. I try to make it warm, inviting, uh, engaging, I feel fun. Very comfortable. That's what I like. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of like 
you know, I think when people feel comfortable, they emote, they share, and it's it's a pleasurable experience. You, one of the greatest gifts, I said it to Leland Sklar the other night when he said, I definitely want to come back on the show. And I said, boom, right there. That's one of the greatest gifts you could have given is for somebody that does this kind of thing is to say, I actually want to come back. That's, that's the beautiful, you know, icing on the cake of it all. So. Yeah. I would love to come back. Write that down. She said she wants to come back. Write that down. Remember that. After that, comes <laughs> out and, and we have a point of reference so I could talk about that song erotic. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I have stories to tell about that song, but I can't really tell it because you guys don't know what it sounds like yet. So And, we'll, and we'll have to have you sing, I guess, huh? Yes. At some point. Yeah. yeah. We wanted to throw some things in, folks, but you, the copyright gets in the way and all that. But Steve yeah. says, best three hours I've spent in a while. Oh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. That's, thank that's, you for all your help. That's <laughs> for what I was saying. You know, that's another gift to hear something like that. Thank you, Steve. Spread the word about our show. We have done almost 700 episodes in just two years since April 2020 when we launched it. And, uh, you That's know, fantastic. we try to have, we try to have a good time. Thank you, Jim. And thanks for being here. Tara, Kathleen Walker Thank in New York you. city, watching in New York city. This was awesome. My friend, uh, congratulations on everything and best of luck. Thank we you. will definitely keep the porch light on for you. And any Thank final you. message that you have about to the show or conversation or, or anything you're excited about? Oh, I'm just excited about life, you know? Just grateful every day that I get to wake up and have another day. And um, I think, you know, my my main thing is to just choose to be happy, you guys. Choose to be happy. Choose happiness. No matter what your circumstances are, you can find something to be happy about. You can find something to be grateful for. Just choose happiness. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Um Steve says, have a good night, Jim and Tara. Thank you very much. And Jane's watching in Sweden, where it's probably <laughs> five o'clock in the morning. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> With us all the time. Yeah. Love from Sue, who I believe is in the Bronx, New York. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. <laughs> Folks watching from all around the world. You're the best. Um, this was really, really fantastic. Thank and the website so is a website. People can go to, uh, of course, iTunes, Spotify, all the music sources. I, have, streaming sources. I have YouTube, but I don't have my own website. Um, just the, the platforms, you know, YouTube, um, Instagram, Tar Camp Original. I will be starting to post on TikTok soon. Um, for TikTok. those of you who TikTok. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. That's where you can find me. And, um, but when uh, things start getting released, I'll come back. We'll, uh, yes. We'll talk be some perfect. More. Perfect. Will you be in a beach ocean situation or I'm hoping you'll, I you'll be surprise us. Situation. <laughs> Let's do it on location in Hawaii. We should. We should. We should. <laughs> on That's location a... from Maui. Okay. We're us doing... ocean, ocean lovers. Uh, ocean you gotta, you gotta drag me out of the ocean. Feet. Let's do it. Yes. You got to drag Let's me out it. of the ocean. Swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing, walking. Yeah. I'm, I, we grew, I grew All up. All of that. I grew Stay up in New York out east on Long Island where we're surrounded by the water. Long here Island. along the New England <laughs> coast. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful where out there. the ocean is here. Yeah. All right. So You're lucky. amazing. So lucky. This, we get to live on the to, coast. It's a beautiful spot here. Yeah, really beautiful. The uh, This was awesome. Thanks for being so open, real, honest, witty, funny. This was like a great tennis match back and forth. The fact, even the knocking off the air was hilarious. <laughs> it was funny just funny. That we both got knocked off. <laughs> I said, <like>, what? <laughs> That's the headline. Jim right. Masters, Tara Kemp were knocked off on the yeah. air live. <laughs> Knocked off live on air. You talk about viral. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> You're the best and uh, a Thank real you. pleasure yeah. to uh, chat with. And, I really uh, enjoyed chatting with you, Jim. Spread the word about our show if you know other oh, folks. Oh, I will. And I'm a fan. Like, I'm so excited to to know about you and be able to, to watch this stuff. Please 
tell Melissa Manchester that she freaking saved my life when I was in high school. If I didn't have those songs to sing, I will tell her. Who something. knows what yeah. I would have done with myself? You know, that was you just cried out loud. <laughs> I, I needed. I wouldn't have cried. It, I wouldn't have cried out loud. Is the problem? Right, I you were cried inside. inside. That's and that right. would have, that would have been very detrimental. Yeah, to my well being. Yeah. So she was a she was an important part of my musical therapy as a, as a child. She really was. Yeah. Really important, and probably a lot of people out there listening feel the same way about her. You know. She really is, uh, and she's a very delightful person to chat with. She's just. She's there. She's present, yeah. you know, and as you saw, because you watched our episode uh -huh. and, and yeah. it was just freestyle. Like so, we real. so, you know, it's funny because I auditioned for Bette Midler after my record deal. I didn't get in. I wanted to be one of her harlots. Oh, yeah. Right. But yeah. Uh, I did not get to do that. I did mm. not get the gig, but I did audition for her. I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of of Bette Midler as well. Bette Midler as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Good names you listed. <laughs> yeah. And we're fans of Tara Kemp oh. on the Gym Master Show. And more to come. We'll be looking for the new music. Keep me posted. And I'll let everybody know as well. And uh, next time we have you come back, maybe we'll have you do something. You know, Maybe you'll be that by the piano. Or maybe you'll have learned guitar then. or what? <laughs> maybe. Maybe, it, maybe I'll sing one of the jazz songs for you that I've been writing played the piccolo or <laughs> and and good luck to your son too with what he's doing that's exciting oh, thank you thank yeah. you that's yeah maybe start. once he starts he's about to start a youtube channel cool. maybe we can get him on the show at some point too like you can have the whole family <laughs> that would be fantastic i know from joe to tara to uh -huh. joshua <laughs> that's right are we going to get your cousin in uh idaho the farmer that's Would they come on? <laughs> Bert, your cousin Bert. Will Bert my cousin come on? Bert in Idaho. Yeah. Or no, Bert but Shah. I have some cousins in Arkansas. We could, and my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? Um, they're retired now. They're retired now. What did they do? What did they do? My uncle. Um, my uncle. Uncle worked for. Um, Kimberly Clark. Company. Oh, yeah. Major company. And he was an inventor for them, a machinist. Wow. Inventor. He invented machines and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Kimberly He's Clark was like one of those major ones, like Procter and Gamble. Yeah. yeah. Big, big company. Mm -hmm. Big, big, big one. Absolutely. Yeah. Nothing really gets manufactured in this country hardly anymore. No. Mm -hmm. We got to bring that back. Got to get that we back. Do. We yeah, do. Yeah. Things have to what be made here. Day? Yeah. Right, right. It's all about it's one of the reasons we're in this pickle. Based, you know. One of the reasons why we're in this pickle because yeah. we're depending on everything coming over from yonder over the ocean, and we need to have it created here, like it was, you know. Yeah, and we need to stop being such a disposable society. You know. Very much so. Like, like everything you see back here, and I mean. Everything except for the diffuser, all of that is used. Everything's used. That's fantastic. See? Including my shirt. This is a used shirt. I've, I've been doing this. I made this, so that's not used. This is. This is vintage. But, yeah, I, I, I definitely promote, you know, buy stuff that, that someone else has used. Yeah. yeah. And obviously you're not going to do that with toilet paper, but you know. <laughs> or underwear. <laughs> or toothbrushes. Toothbrushes. <laughs> there's some things that you can there have, have to, to be limits. Know. There's there's there getting have, back to the boundary. Yeah. Those boundaries. But it's, are it's um <laughs> you know, it's nice to be mindful of how much waste you create. All the plastic in the ocean. We just throw stuff out. Yeah. We use it once. The bottom of the Marianas Trench. Can you believe that? Microplastics. That's you think so about scary. that. People take take a plastic spoon to stir the coffee once, and then that plastic spoon is just disposed. And all it did was go yeah. whoosh, 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 yeah. once. And yeah. 
Nah. I don't know. I have faith in us. I think we're moving to a to a better, more holistic time period. I, I have a friend who goes to the ocean, scoops up all that stuff, the plastic, wow. and I love that. Yeah, and turns it into art. Oh, I love that. Art in galleries. Yeah. Art that see? you see in galleries. Cool stuff, you know? Creativity. One man's treasure. Tra trash is another man's trash treasure. Trash is another man's treasure. Yes, Very absolutely. True. Well, this was cool. Well, Boy, you're a treasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, my father has always said, and I know I've said it multiple times. Oh, that's it. You got to go. That was your limit right there. Now now it's going to, that little ding that went off, that what bell. What was the ding? Did you hear a ding? There was a ding. I heard the bell. What was the, what, what? I think that, that was on that, my. Yeah, it was on your your end. That means that that means that now this is going to cost union I, rates if I keep you on the show. <laughs> Ding! That was the limit. Time Jim. to wrap it up. If you it's want another, if you need another recipe, it's going to be union <laughs> rates. <laughs> Even though my I'm not father, passionate about cooking, <laughs> my father has always said. I'm passionate about eating, though. Yes, me too. My father has always said, if anybody ever says anything nice to you, ask them to. Please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. My uh, Irish dad from New York with his wit and wisdom. Um, you're the best again. And thanks for spending all this time. This was epic. This was uh, this was half of the length of the episode, half of the length of the episode when Scott Schwartz was on, the actor Scott Schwartz. He was the kid in Christmas uh, Story that got his tongue stuck on the oh, pole. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was the kid. He was the rich kid oh, in the God, toy yes. with Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason. Right. He was on for six hours. Oh my gosh. We did, and I was sitting in the chair for six hours straight. Yeah, yeah it was amazing. It was an amazing conversation. He had a lot. He was sharing a lot about growing up and on these coasts and working with Jackie Gleason, and Richard Pryor, and and it was in the thick of the pandemic, so everything was closed, and he was very. He was open about what was happening to him at the time. And it was just uh, so you just did about 50% of that. It was fantastic. Three hours right. and 11 minutes we chatted. And it didn't feel like. <laughs> no, it didn't feel I, I, and we This could is like Dick Cabot. Three hours and, and still no, well, that's why I call these conversations. Out. If this was an interview, it would have been, tell us about the book. Tell us about right. the movie. Tell us, the, tell tell us about the CD. Head. What was your name again? Out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joining him again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was funny. All right. We both better go before we get knocked off again. <laughs> it's time to get a little meatloaf action happening. Yes. Yeah. Situation. Are you reheating or are you making from scratch? <laughs> I don't have any meatloaf right now. <laughs> <laughs> you better get some there's a supply shortage <laughs> yeah there's a shortage <laughs> well thanks for being with us and and recreating you, in man. your your house this beach ocean situation windblown I, sort of model-esque look i needed it my my poor computer kept dying on me it's like <laughs> So hot. It's starting to cool off. It's like the sun's starting to go. We've been we've been talking for so long. The sun is starting to like go low in the sky now. It's probably nice, huh? So it's, it's cooling nice. off. Yeah, it's cooling off. It's, it's starting to cool off. off. Yeah. And I see out the window there's a bit of a breeze starting to kick nice. up. The so breeze and I. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you be so well. It was and so much fun. This thank was great, you, wasn't it? And thank you to the Levities. Levities, yes. I'm loving you, Levities. What's great is you're not only a uh, guest, you're also one of our Lovety viewers, which I think is awesome. Yes. Full circle, huh? Yeah. How does it feel to be a Lovety? Because I always say that people can get Grammys, Emmys, Tonys, Peabody's, Tellies, Oscars. But when you get a Lovety on the Gym Masters show, are your feet tingling right now? That's what the guests say happens. Their feet tingle. Yes. I'm feeling love. I'm feeling a lot of love today. It's That's a good perfect. Thing. Then really we good. did our job. <laughs> <laughs> you be good. well. Go stretch those legs, as I say to all the guests. Get the okay. circulation going. And uh, we will welcome you back. Uh, spread the word about our show. We loved having you here. It was really fun. Thank we you. went in a lot of different directions. And again, thanks for your 
honesty and your realness and uh, your humor. It was just fantastic. Thank you so much, Jim. You're welcome. Chat with you again. <laughs> Absolutely. We will do it again. Okay. Okay. Sounds Thanks, good. Thanks, Tara. You take bye, care. Bye, everybody. Well. Bye bye now. Cheers. Bye bye. bye. Now. Tara Kemp here on the Gym Master Show live, coming to you live from Berkeley, California. Thanks for all the great comments. You guys are fantastic. Uh, Sue in New York says, a night, Tara, and with smiles, and Jane in Sweden, and Kathleen in New York, and everybody else. This was a really fantastic conversation. Really interesting how uh, she got knocked off the air, and then we got knocked off the air at separate times. But we're troopers. We're professionals. She found her way to She's like, I'll be darned if I get knocked off the air. <laughs> and she found her way. She, she ran. Where's a fan? Hurry, I need a fan. I got to get back on the air. Bring me the fan now. <laughs> she plugs the fan in, cools off the computer, windblown breeze. And then we got knocked off the air. And I don't know what happened there, but uh, something, you know, strange times. We're living in odd times. Just go with the flow. Whatever comes your way. Just go with it and work with it and make the best of it. That's that's all you can do. And she knows because she's been in situations in studios and on stage and everything where not everything is perfect. And I've been on television, radio and on stage where things sometimes can go awry. It's what you do with it. It's how you react to things in life. That's what makes the difference. So as we always say, just relax, keep calm and breathe from the diaphragm and Hopefully you'll get through everything. This was awesome, gang. I just want to remind you, for those of you who are uh, with us here, tomorrow we've got a comedic legend. Barbara Brighton is with us, legendary comedian, actress, singer, and uh, she is absolutely fantastic. And uh, she has been doing Joan Rivers for like a long time. And she sells out in Vegas. She's in Vegas now. She's going to come to us tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, live and direct from Vegas. Again, on Sunday afternoon, five-time Emmy-nominated television producer, writer, and author. She was the supervising producer for years for the soap opera Guiding Light. She was a writer for years on Another World, as well as Days of Our Lives. She was one of the heads of Primetime Entertainment East Coast Division for NBC, responsible for hundreds of hours of television shows, movies, and miniseries on NBC, as well as a writer for ABC. And she's a fabulous author, and she has a new book, You Can't Stop Me. And it's this really riveting story uh, that she's going to tell. I don't want to give it away, but she'll be here on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. So get your cup of coffee. Make those eggs Benedict with the avocado that uh, Tara mentioned. <laughs> and, uh, and join us. And then on uh, Sunday night, Melissa Manchester, Grammy Award-winning music legend, is back with us 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Then we have the incredible... Kayleen Peoples, acclaimed vocalist, musician, composer, former Miss California. She's worked with them all. She's also a fabulous flautist. She's with us on Monday. Tuesday, Tony Orlando is going to be with us. Yeah, the one and only Tony Orlando is going to be with us on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Then on Wednesday, John Davidson makes his return visit to the Jim Masters Show, legendary TV and game show host, singer, songwriter, actor, entertainer. Now, you remember him from Hollywood Squares and everything else. If, you, uh, if you're watching this episode that we're doing right now, you know, a month from now, these guests will have already appeared. You can binge watch them in our archives. Leland Sklar was with us recently, music icon, legendary bassist, session musician. He was with Toto, the popular group Toto. He's with with Carol King, Lyle Lovett, James Taylor. He's been a part of over 2,000 albums. He's in the immediate family. And he's also on hundreds of television show theme songs, movie scores, and so much more. He is a legend. He was with us the other night. Check that episode out. And uh, 
world-renowned magician, mentalist, and hypnotist David Sharif was with us live from Las Vegas just the other night. If you didn't see that, check that out as well. We thank our very special guest, Tara Kemp, joining us. 90s chart-topping, R&B gold, record-selling artist, and so much more. The music is still happening. We had some great memories going back to the 90s with her and talking about some of the new things that she's doing right here on the Gym Masters Show. Thanks, guys, for being with us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click that red button you see there and the notification bell, gang. We would love that. And also give this episode a thumbs up like if you enjoyed it and leave a comment on the YouTube channel as well. That helps us big time. And we really, really appreciate that. That's the wrap gang. We appreciate all of you. Thanks for sticking with us here. It was a really fantastic show. I can't believe we we've chatted for three hours and 20 minutes or so. It was really, really great. And um, we got a busy weekend of shows and de all designed for all of your entertainment pleasure where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. Thank you very much, Sue. Good to see everybody watching live and watching Memorex. That is uh, in the archives. Jim Masters here. Thank you for your time this time till next time. Be well, take care of one another, love one another, be good to one another, be good to yourself. If you're watching live, we'll see you on the next one. If you're watching this later in the archives, thank you as well. We appreciate that. Spread the word, tell everybody you know about our show. Share the levity that helps us grow is when you tell others, hey, there's this cool show with this guy, Jim Masters. They have epic conversations, lots of surprises, interaction, and every show is something different. And it's on YouTube at Jim Masters TV. It's the Jim Masters show. Tell your friends about it. We would appreciate that. Uh, we don't say goodbye. We say uh, hasta la vista, sayonara, shalom, cheers, slancha, ciao, and um, avida zain. <laughs> Catch you later and all the rest. Uh, we'll see you on the next one, gang, okay? Jim Masters here. Thank you for your time this time. Till next time on the Jim Masters Show. Epic night tonight. We'll see you on the next one. Take care and be well. Cheers. <laughs>